oh my God. I literally started going and I was like, I wonder why nobody's like responding. Oh my God. I've like been, fuck, how long have I been streaming? I'm so dumb. I've been streaming for like 20, I thought I was streaming for like 20 minutes and I was like going on a rant and it wasn't, I'm so dumb. All right. Oh my God. Let me go back. So dumb. All right. Anyway. Hi, welcome back to Slightly Twisted Female. I'm your host, Brittany Rue. Thank God I noticed that. I'm so dumb. Anyway, so I was, let's just, I'm going to just race back into it. I'm so dumb. I can't, like, I literally, and I was like, damn, I'm like, why is nobody acknowledging anything that I'm saying? <laughs> I'm so dumb. Sorry. All right. We're back to the part three installment of, I've been literally sitting here for 20 minutes talking to myself. Sorry. Here we go. Let's just, I'll try to remember what I was saying. All right. So, Stella O'Malley part three. The reason why I think it is so important to highlight Stella O'Malley and Jen Specht and, and, you know, underscore the problems with them is because it is Stella O'Malley. I was just talking about the fact that Buck Angel here just did a live stream where she's talking about, you know, being on the brink of having 100,000 subscribers, right? Buck Angel started her, started really focusing on her YouTube channel just a few months ago. Now has almost 100,000 subscribers. Clearly is well supported by the algorithm. Obviously not shadow banned and is being pushed by the algorithm. Has this like, you know, huge core of supporters. Her channel's monetized. As you can see right here, it's monetized. I haven't been monetized in forever. So even though she's so-called dunking on trans and making fun of trans, she's able to, you know, YouTube has no problem with her right? She's able to make money. And even though, you know, she's technically doing that should tell you everything you need to know. This is, a, this is, this, she is part of this whole system. Okay. The problem with gender, uh, Stella O'Malley is that Jen Speck people, these true trans people like Stella O'Malley and Jen Speck are literally paving the way to legitimizing these so-called gender critical trans like Buck Angel and Blair White. And what's going to start happening and has already happened, make no mistake, is, hold on, I got to let my dog, give me one second, one set a treat. I'm so mad. I'm so mad because I was on such a roll before. Anyway, Stella, um, these true trans organizations like Jen Speck, I know it seems like, oh, like, why am I spending all this time targeting our own side when there's so many other things to focus on? Because I think that the true trans thing is actually where our fight lies. I think everybody can eventually figure out that all the other more extremist stuff is so obviously insane. But when we have people like Blair White and Buck Angel who are so supported by the same algorithm, the same algorithm that had totally censored all gender critical voices at one point and it now cherry picked a few trans people. It's the same, it's the same thing as like, it's as ridiculous having trans people represent gender critical feminism is as ridiculous as having men, these, these AGP men speaking on like, you know, uh, like women's day, right? It's like, why are we have why are we having trans people represent gender critical, the gender critical movement? It makes no sense. Why are they our leaders? And you got to look at people like Stella O'Malley and everybody who makes up a gen spec. You have to understand, look at the history of where they came from. These are all people who made money, who built careers off of propagating gender ideology in the first place, right? These are the therapists who are doing affirmation therapy and all this sort of stuff. I think that they saw that the, the tide was going to shift. And I think that they were smart and strategic enough to realize that they needed to get ahead of that curve. Because eventually all the people who did it and who stuck with this affirmation only model were eventually going to be outed as like how horrible it was and all the damage that they did. And they're like, let me get out early because this is this tide is shifting and it's shifting towards this true trans narrative. That is going to be, if not has already, the main, mainstream most popular narrative. It's going to be, well, some people are trans, not everybody. That way it can preserve itself. This is all about self-preservation for these people. It's about keeping it alive. Buck Angel right here is going to be like the, the you know, the darling of the gender critical movement. And she, again, of course, she came out against me and did this long rant that I needed to be taken out. I needed to be, you know, taken out of the gender critical movement and basically calling for people to try to have me deplatformed and stuff like that. It's not going to happen, right? It's not going to happen. Um... Then I, you know, people got mad too, because recently I, uh, 
posted a clip of Julie Bindle. And Julie Bindle, who previously talked about these very pro-trans privileged activist talking points, saying that, you know, trans lesbians are, are valid lesbians. And everybody's like, oh, you know, what's your problem? People can change their mind. You know, that's that's not fair. She's done so much for women. Uh, she's done a lot of harm for women. She, what are you talking? She's also ha done a lot of harm. I'm sorry, but if you've promoted this at all, You've done a lot of harm. She was an academic, uh, and everybody's like, you know, everybody needed time to learn. No, no, because honestly, I, I talk about, I, I was, uh, in 2006, when I was a freshman at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh, there was a trans-identifying male who was like six foot four, this real skinny guy. He was a, a math PhD. And I remember getting changed with a bunch of my girlfriends to go to the gym and this guy comes in he goes oh hello ladies hello we were like oh uh, what the fuck and he's like wearing girls clothes and all this sort of stuff he's like agp fetish gear and he starts getting undressed and we're like oh okay of course he had to like come over right by us is talking to us the whole time and we're like um and he and he like took off and he's wearing these like you know girl panties and you could tell he must have just had SRS. The, you just had the genital mutilation surgery because you didn't see any kind of bulge or whatever. He's like, yes, I remember when I was a young girl. Oh, you know, I and was like telling these stories. He kept like referring to it, like himself as back when he was a young girl. And and we're like, all right. And I just remember we were also my one friend, Lexi, was from Russia. She was the most like she's like, ew, he's disgusting. She's like, what a freak. And like and then she would like kind of purposely become friends with him just to like be mean to him. It was actually really funny. She was like really, really funny. But we were all grossed out by it. There was never a time that I was like real in with like LGBTQ and like queer and like the never. I was like, I knew that it existed, but I was kind of like, yeah, you know, those kids were like mostly like not people that I was like interested in spending time with. They just seemed like histrionic and like, I just, you know, annoying and all that sort of stuff. And so it's like, no, I really can't relate. So people got mad. Then I had, you know, posted this clip. And I was like, that's an ancient clip. And then somebody else came. They're like, you know, she's peaked probably earlier back, you know, more recently back when you still were writing your trans women are women essay. And I was like, I think I know who it is too that said that. It's just like, I'm not even going to mention who it is. It's a nutcase. But I was like, what are you talking about? I've never in my life, and I'm going to make myself big for this. Never in my life have I ever said trans women are women, unless I'm like quoting somebody, unless it's like in this way. I have never said the words trans women are women and like meant it. Never, never. Not on, not on Facebook, not in speech, not even for a moment. Never have I believed that. Never have I thought that. You know, there was a time where I was kind of like, oh, okay, you know, let people like do what they want. And I, I was like kind of like trying to be like tolerant of it. I always thought it was kind of gross, you know, but I was like, well, then maybe that's a me problem. I don't know. Right. Whatever the case may be. No, no, there was never a time. And people get mad that I'm bringing up this Julie Bindle back. And I posted this clip. Right. And there's a lot of people who like support it and agree with what I posted on Twitter. And there's also people who are getting mad. Like, you know, she can change her mind. It's like, well, no, because when she was one of the architects of this, she was in academia. She she's published books. I mean, she is at the sort of nucleus of, of, you know, these ideas about gender and sex and human sexuality and feminism. She's one of the, you know, like the foremost Western academics about feminism. Yeah, no, I think that, you know, she, she has kind of a responsibility. And if she had the sort of thinking skills that actually made her not only embrace this, but like promote it, then I don't think we need to go ahead and make sure that she still has a career in gender critical feminism. I don't think she's entitled to still be some sort of like gender critical feminist leader. It doesn't mean that like she's got to be totally like blacklisted and blackballed. She can go focus on, why don't she go focus on like porn or, you know, female trafficking or, or you know, domestic violence, uh, you know, or, or stuff like that. But no, I think she's kind of, you know, really kind of like lost the right to to be any sort of influencer feminist influencer on the topic of gender critical feminism. 
she she was you know a huge driving force of this at one point and i'm sorry her changing her mind just isn't enough because you know what she hasn't even fully peaked yet she's still platforming autogynophiles she's still using um wrong sex pronouns she's still like pr you know miss like uh using preferred pronouns defending all of that stuff including autogynophiles and conversations and community building and brainstorming sessions around the topic of uh what is it around the topic of um uh you know female safe women's spaces and, and female safeguarding and just letting these men in we don't need his influence or his input and who the hell are you to let him in we didn't say that was okay you don't have that right you don't have that right to give our language away um I don't know if I said this, did I say this part when I was like, um, fuck, I'm just trying to remember like what I said and what I didn't say. Now this was what I, Buck Angel is so dangerous. Buck Angel is so dangerous. Buck Angel just wants to go wherever she can get the most attention and, and have the most influence. The same is true for a lot of these people. A lot of these people who've always kind of been in the public eye speaking about this sort of stuff and who kind of flip flop and change their positions as other people come forward. I'm sorry, uh, Julie Bindle had access to everything. She had access to, to, um, the trans, the transgender empire or transsexual empire. She had access to all of the Radical feminist lesbian writings that have been talk, speaking out since the 60s and the 70s, talking about the threat that transgender ideology and transgender, you know, men and the idea of transsexualism, the threat that they pose to women. So she she knew about all of those things. She just rejected that and thought that, the you know, that, that oh, okay, the way to go was accepting uh, that trans women are women. Then once she realized that, wow, no, the gender critical pushback was strong, then she got with the program. So I, I don't feel sorry that I'm calling her out. And I know that it looks like I'm calling out a lot of people that are supposedly on our side. But the problem is our side is so heavily infected and infiltrated because we didn't hold good boundaries because we let all these random people in that I've been talking about true trans as a Trojan horse since, you know, some of my earliest videos. And I had my first video, it was literally called the true trans Trojan horse. And it was about Blair White. It was one of my earliest ever live streams. And it got taken down by Blair White. And I was talking about all of this. And I said, if we are not extremely cautious, what's going to happen is it's they're going to come in and they're going to look like they're one of us. And they're all going to come out infiltrated. And it's already happened. We're already there. The, 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 you know, wooden horse is within the castle walls. All of the Trojans have jumped out. They're now mingling with everybody, having sex, you know, having these half breed children. So then you got all this confusing. We don't know who's who. Everybody looks the same. You don't know who was one of the Trojans, who was one of ours, who's been influenced and tainted. I, I think that we can all see that the very seriously, critically, mentally ill, you know, side of this is, is, is going to be easy to call out. This is the more difficult thing is pointing out this true trans stuff. And it is so telling that Buck Angel, I can't even make it to 10,000. Uh, look at all of, look at all the engagement that I get. Look how, look at my chat. Look at all the people, you know, commenting, sharing, liking. I, I, I average between like two and negative four uh, sub subscribers a week. That's what I'm averaging. Buck Angel's been in this for a couple of months and is about to break into a hundred thousand. That's not me being jealous. That's me letting you know, look at who the algorithm favors. And this is the same algorithm that had us muzzled. This is the same algorithm that is shaping how children were thinking about this, that were promoting people like Samantha Lux and, and then punishing people like Vanessa Voki. Right? That should say a lot. Look, look, and I don't, was I saying this now or before? I can't remember. She's able to monetize. I haven't been able to monetize since I don't even know when. She's able to promote all of these things about people, you know, the dunking on uh, these so called trans rights activists, which she is. She's allowed to make money off of it. They don't care. She's not getting penalized for like bullying or hate speech. It, she's getting rewarded for it by YouTube.
my all of my my uh the algorithm cuts me off after an hour no one sees my videos after you know like an hour and an hour and a half once i'm done the stream it really stops showing the stream to anybody it's all word of mouth has to be shared and i have a pretty loyal base my boy base is you guys are sharing you're posting i can see where the stuff gets posted it's getting posted to facebook over it twitter you know it's, it's getting clipped on youtube and every time that happens, the algorithm is supposed to give me credit for that and perpetuate my video. It's not happening. These are the people who they have accepted as fine, that they that they realize, okay, this gender critical thing is already happening. I think Matt Walsh forced it into the mainstream. I don't care what you think about him. Matt Walsh in the Daily Wire forced it into the mainstream. Kelly J. Keene also forced it in the mainstream, luckily with the help of their media circuit, which was a lot more amenable to women than, unfortunately, the, uh, America's was. Why? Because America cares so much more about profit. America is very capitalistic, profit-driven society. So they were really going hard with the muzzling of us and promoting this because, because of the you know, far, uh, pharmaceutical companies and the American Medical Association, all the money to be had. But then once they kind of forced out, you know, these gender critical talking points, Tucker Carlson and stuff like that, you know, honestly, they all deserve credit. I'm sorry, but they do. It's now it's the, the they all stole feminist talking points. All the talking point Redux deserves a lot of credit, a lot of credit, a lot of credit. Now, once they realize that, shoot, we can't, you know, as, as much as we tried to muzzle everybody and really stifle this thing, we weren't able to be successful in forcing everyone to fully accept that trans women are women. So we're going to have to kind of like recalibrate and then go with this true trans narrative that there are some real trans people, people like Buck Angel and Blair White, and that they really medicalize and really do all the stuff, then they get to really be trans. These are trans privilege activists. Stella O'Malley is paving the way for these sort of people. Stella O'Malley is paving the way for, for the opposition of WPATH, for the true trans version of WPATH. And what she's doing, the way that she, it's not like she's, you know, she she's attracting all of these other people who are kind of seeing the writing on the wall, all of these other professionals who who, who make up gender, uh, the gender industry, which is such a multifaceted uh, machine who are seeing the writings on the wall and they're like, well, let me get with the true trans thing. And all I have to do is, is say that, oh, you know, you know, kids shouldn't be doing it under 18. And, you know, we should uh, ask questions when people come in and say that they're trans. We should just ask a few questions, right? And then that's, you know, but then if they really persist, then, well, I guess, you know, we can go transition them. And that's what's going to happen. Like with Julie Bindle. I'm sorry, I don't, I'm not... I don't know if I said this before. Yeah, let me quick. With Julie Bindle and everybody's like, oh, somebody, somebody on Twitter was like, yeah, Britney just wants to be like, she just wants to say that she's special because she never fell in with the trans women or women stuff. I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. I'm trying to remember what I said. So I don't know if I said it twice or if I said it the first time around, but somebody was like, yeah, Britney just wants to be special because she never, you know, did the trans women or women stuff, but she's been in this for like five minutes or whatever. And she's like, you know, she just wants to be the leader of the gender criticals. I was like, leader of the gender criticals. So I don't give a fuck about being a leader. First of all, I can't even get, I can't even pull together a real protest. Because it's so hard to get people to, like, actually come out and work with you. So many of the, the other people, you know, are there so many, like, just difficult people in this movement. I get blackballed. I get left out of things. I get, you know, ignored. I, I have rumors going on about me. It's fine. I don't care. I can't even make it to 10,000. Leader of what? I have a minuscule following. Most of the people that go, who's that? I don't fucking care. I just want this to be brought down. I want the gender industry to be brought down. I don't need to be famous. I don't need to go to some, you know, big convention. Because once this is done, I'm going to go and I'm once my kids are a little bit older, I'm going to go dedicate my life to taking care of pregnant women. Once once I finish this, once I feel like we finally brought this to its knees, I'm going to go back and I'm going to be a birth worker and I'm going to get back into midwifery and I'm going to get back into being a doula and I'm going to do that till the day that I die. I'm going to raise my kids. I'm going to raise my grandbabies. God, you know, maybe one day I'll be a foster parent when my kids are older. It, you know, that would be great. 
and I'm going to I'm going to take care of pregnant women and celebrate pregnant women and and fight for for healthy normal birth and push back against the medicalization of childbirth and the medical trauma the obstetrics is, is you know like like do uh, performing on women on a daily basis and I'm going to live out and and hopefully my cancer doesn't come back and kill me I don't need this to survive so that I have like some career I don't need to be the leader of anything. I don't care if nobody remembers my name. I care that we are successful. All right. So then I, this is what I post about Julie Bindle. And then people got all mad. And it's like, I get it. People are, get, oops, people are getting mad. They're like, you keep going against people on our side. Because unfortunately, our side is so tainted. The well is Ladies so poisoned. Ladies and gentlemen, Julie Bindle, academic, founder of the Lesbian Project, and proponent of political lesbianism. In your opinion... Are women who date trans women valid lesbians? Yes. 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 I think so. I think that if you identify as female and the person who you're dating, having sex with, in love with, identifies as a woman, then yes. So Han says, does Julie Bindle still think that transbians are lesbian sisters? I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. I think the damage is already done. And I think Julie Bindle is a proponent of something called political lesbianism. So she believes that to be a good lesbian, I mean, to be, you know, an ally to women and to be like a good uh, feminist, that you can opt into being a lesbian, that it's something that women can choose to do. It's a way that they can show their allegiance to women. And she talks about when she decided to become a lesbian. We could, we could do a whole stream on Julie Bindle. That's a whole other thing. I think it's it's a repugnant idea. I think I think it's disrespectful to heterosexual women that they should, you know, reject who they are and their sexuality. And it's the way that they can kind of show allegiance to that's the way that they can be good feminists is to reject who they are. And I think it's I think it's repugnant and it's it's awful to lesbians. Lesbians who actually are opposite sex uh, repulsed, who don't have the choice to be same sex attracted. And it, the fact that the, what they'll get in relationships with these political lesbians that are just doing it for, you know, political clout and maybe they're falling in love and getting attached and, and these other women are just doing it for political reasons. And who's going to get hurt in the end? So lesbians that are going to get hurt in the end, right? that are going to end up, you know, falling in love with somebody who could never really love them or want them or be sexually attracted to them the way that is fair to that other woman. You know, so I, I, I'm i honestly, I don't really like this whole idea of like, well, you know, she's changed. I don't, who cares? There are so many other people doing such good work. Why is she still entitled to having this big gender critical platform? I'm not saying she can't be a good feminist or still do work. But I don't think she, she, she so has been, you know, shown that she's so not capable of being a strong critical thinker on this topic that I think we just need to be done with, with her and people like her. She's still showing that she can't fully take herself out of uh, gender ideology. She's still, you know, working together with these AGPs and defending it. And she still uses wrong sex pronouns, she's still giving away our language. As far, as far as I'm concerned, anyone who gives away our language is a trans uh, privilege activist. It's a privilege for them to be able to steal our language. And it's hurting women. To me, I'm sorry, but no, she's had more than enough time and the damage that she's already done. Right. And it's the same thing. So with Stella O'Malley. So let's get back into this. I want to wait. Let me see if I can quick Buck Angel again. Mark my words. Mark my words. Buck Angel, who is this drug addict, who's this drug addicted, histrionic, like fame person who has harmed children, has led children astray in so many ways. Why do we trust her at all to be some sort of like guiding light? It's the same thing with Exelanzic. These people who like have a history in like gender studies and are who are so programmed from day one with this, you know, uh, it's like, I'm sorry, but there are way too many good thinkers out there to continue to waste time with people who have already shown like done so much harm 
And we're, we're, we're so it, it to me, okay, okay, it, the example is to me, it's like, it's like Joe Biden. It's like when we decided to vote, I, I everybody hated me. Everyone hated me back in uh, 2020 because I hated Joe Biden. And every, I lost, do you know the amount of friends that I lost? Like friends, like real friends, like friends of my personal stuff that I lost when I kept talking out against Joe Biden, why he's fucking terrible. And I was, it's funny because now I'm like, does anyone want to apologize? You guys, anybody want to apologize? It's all good. I'll just know that deep down you really are. You, you know what it is. Joe Biden in 1994 authored something called the, uh, the 1994 crime bill when he was, uh, in Ohio. And it did something where it had these, like, it was a fe on the federal level of, you know, the Department of Corrections, uh, the Department of Justice. He had instated all of, you know, these sweeping mandatory minimums so that judges could not use their own jurisprudence to, you know, and weigh mitigating factors versus aggravating factors to decide, you know, an appropriate sentence for a convict based on their unique crime and situation and the factors of the crime. They were forced to give these, these set, the, the judge couldn't use their own discretion. The judge had to give these very harsh sentences, even if there was so many other like mitigating factors that any other reasonable person would be like, well, no, because of all this other stuff, they shouldn't, right? Didn't matter. He's, he is responsible for authoring the uh, cocaine disparity laws. So if you were found to have a gram of crack versus a gram of cocaine, if you had a gram of crack, say you were like a young mother, you know, who, who had fallen susceptible to crack cocaine, you could be sent away for life. <laughs> Never mind the fact that we've already have declassified proof that the CIA was selling crack cocaine, had developed crack cocaine and was selling it to the inner cities and selling it to, to black Americans and destroying their lives and then destroying their lives again to, and, and with these crack cocaine disparity laws, whereas again, it was like, like powder cocaine was, you know, more popular amongst like affluent white people. So they were getting slaps on the wrist. Whereas if it was crack cocaine and the only difference is that you're cooking it down with some baking soda, they're getting sent away for life for some personal use amount. There's still some people who are still suffering, sitting in prison from crack cocaine, uh, uh, you know, laws back in the 80s and 90s. The reason why the CIA was selling crack cocaine in the inner cities was to fund our war against Venezuela and the Venezuela communists. It's so corrupt and it's so insane. So I say all this to say Joe Biden created so many of the issues that led to all of what we recognize later with Black Lives, uh, Black Lives Matter. You know, that all kind of culminated into a head with Black Lives Matter. And then what we have Joe Biden, who years later is going to what? Be talking, he's like running on a platform of he's going to save us and, and, and bring everybody, you know, back to justice and, and, you know, be this big like savior for Black America. Bro, you're the one who created the conditions that led to all of these disparities that, that you know, disproportionately targeted Black Americans. You're the one. So, so it's like, it's like, it's like the same thing. It's like with the pharmaceutical companies will, you know, like create these diseases and then sell you the cure for it. Right. It's like, well, they say that like, you know, HIV was manufactured and now they're spending forever, you know, creating the cure for it and making money off of it. No, no, that doesn't get to work that way. So like with Buck Angel, with Stella O'Malley, with a lot of these like therapists and these people who built gender ideology, who profited off of gender ideology, who made gender, Julie Bindle made gender ideology what it is, you don't now get to come around and profit off of saving us from it. You're the reason we're here in the first place. You're not entitled to sitting here being like a savior for us. Let's really fast. Um, No, you don't understand. I went to, and I talk about this all the time. I went to school with Joe Biden's family, right? Carol, look, Google Caroline Biden. I have, I'll show you, I have pictures with her. She was like, I went to a small private school. There was like the, we, like, there was like 60 kids per grade. So we all knew each other very well. She was a year ahead of me. My friend group was friends with her friend group. Okay. She is the cousin of Hunter Biden. 
She is the niece, the niece of Joe Biden. Her name is Caroline Biden. She was one of my best friends. Okay. I, so I know so many people know these people. I know what type of person Joe Biden is. I know what his family is like. Hunter Biden and Caroline Biden were like best friends. If you Google Caroline Biden, you'll see that when the whole laptop leak happened, there was tons of communication between Caroline and Hunter and all of this sort of stuff. Um, really fast. Let me just see if... Uh, and again, Buck Angel wants me out of here because it's like, you know, I, I won't sit there and say, oh, yeah, it's okay. You know, you can do it. Uh, you can, you can, you know, as long as you sit there and like dunk on all these other people, then I'll, I'll give you a pass. I'm not giving out passes and she's mad. Mm. Really quick. Oh, yeah, this is it. Really yes. Know. My name is Seema yes. Jelani. Yes. 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 I... Yes. Sorry. Yes. I think so. I think... Really quick. I haven't even watched this, so I don't know. This is when she was basically saying I need to be taken uh, out. Hi, everybody. <laughs> uh, I hope the audio is good this time. I tested it, and it seemed to be fine. So if you can all let me know before I move on, I just want to make sure that it's completely okay. If you can just give me a little thumbs up there. Seth is in the house and good afternoon, everybody. You know, I just want to let you know that, um, right on. Thank you. So I just want to let you know that, um, I just came off of X formerly known as Twitter. You know, it put me in a really weird space. So I apologize if I didn't come on all. Yay! But let me just back up here for a minute. I just wanted to make sure that the audio was good first. But first, I want to say this. Thank you, everybody, for joining me for hump day. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining me for therapy. Boy, do I need it today. <laughs> to, and thank you so much, honestly, for showing up and doing these lives with me and, and you know, getting into some stuff that... Not everybody wants to get into, but I do, you know, I, I'm the guy who really wants to have these conversations. And, you know, again, I do encourage you not to. So agree. we're supposed to pretend that it's normal that she's saying I'm the guy and all this sort of stuff, that this is going to be our gender critical savior, right? That this woman who, who was, you know, to bragging about helping eight year olds transition and who has done uh, God, I wish there was a space. I don't even think I could get away on rumble really exposing her the, the sort of like, you know, adult stuff that she does. I might have to open, you know what I might do? I might start an only fans just so I can talk about buck angel. Oh my God. Then I could, you know, we could actually go through like her, like pornography and stuff. Gosh, should I do that? Should I open up an OnlyFans? I got it because I got to like keep strategizing how I can get away with like showing and talking about this stuff. It needs to be dissected. I don't care. It needs to be dissected because the thing is, it's like she gets so protected and hidden from all this stuff. And it's really scary because she works with these very young women, these trans identifying women, and she employs them. She has something called like Bucks Angels or something like that. Where she, it's like a whole like porn troupe that she like recruits people. And some of these, I'm like, how old are some of these girls? They look like they're like 18 or 19 years old. And she's like photographing them and like, like, you know, putting them. Sonia, good to see you. Putting them up. Uh, oh my God. I don't care. <clears throat> people can subscribe thinking they're going to get something fun. And then they'll see it's just me like, you know, going through this like creepy older woman's <laughs> porn career yay karen <laughs> karen's in the house i think karen might be uh on a suspension so everybody needs to make a point share a bunch of karen videos and stuff like that keep help help her uh channel to keep going with me that that's a hundred percent okay i think you all have learned okay we're gonna go into that real six quick here learn from you all so let's see who's in the house here this morning i see australia i see kentucky i see perth australia i've been all right bro. to be on a lot of of conservative podcasts right so with that isle of man is in the house lithuania is in the house wales is in the house right on atlantic canada is in the house thank you guys 
other people in this community because I have Florida's in the house because I do have travel experience and I do have on some level life experience around the world. And as a transsexual man, that, that has made a huge difference. As a transsexual man, why is it okay? The hypocrisy, it makes no sense, but let's just keep going. It's in my transition because I have interacted in this world, you know, in a real space, not on the internet, not, I've actually at Montreal's in the house, I've at, interacted literally, physically, eyes touching, meeting people all over the world. Bro, I don't care. Where is the part Folk where- there, uh, but I haven't really been to- I'm scared to have a conversation with somebody who hates me. I'm just not. So I, I accepted her invitation. Oh, oh, okay. Now she's talking about me. I don't hate you, bro. I don't know you. I don't hate you. I vehemently disagree with what you are doing. I vehemently disagree with the influence that you've had in the past. I don't know you to hate you on like a personal level. You know, go see. I did an actual interview with her. I was willing to step up to the oh, place. He's talking and to have Yeah. Know. And at which she also um an interview with all right here we go sorry folk there uh but i haven't really been to like russia or any space like that i i kind of was not so comfortable and you know for many reasons so but so um uh Susie asked how do we get on buck from stella i know i need to get back to stella it's because i'm saying that stella and Jen Speck are really paving the way for voices like Buck Angel and Blair White to sort of take over the, the gender critical uh, perspective, right? It, it's like the, so it's like gender, you know, Stella O'Malley, this, co the concepts that she's peddling is why it's making it seem legitimate and normal and reasonable for people like Buck Angel to basically be the the top voice in the gender critical community, right? To, to so it makes no having a trans person be a leading voice, gender critical voice makes no sense. Again, it's like having a man speaking for it, that would be like having Rachel Dolezal speaking on you know Black Pride Month, right? Or, or Juneteenth as like a Juneteenth uh, keynote speaker. Or it's like how like up in Canada where they always have a trans identifying male speaking, um, you know, at the aftermath of the, the one massacre where there was like this guy who there was like this misogynistic massacre, this guy who hated women. He hate, he blamed feminists for stuff and he went and he massacred a lot of women because he said he hated feminists and hated women. And so now on the anniversary of that massacre, they've been... Uh, inviting these trans identified males to give keynote speeches. And it is so insanely disrespectful. So yeah, I just say all that to say that I think Jen Speck is, is, you know, creating the environment for which voices like this are going to dominate. Let me tell you what happened today on X. Malaysia was incredible for me. I wish I could just tell you, have a stories, or give you stories of my travels. I haven't listened to this, so I'm like nervous. I haven't listened to these yet. So we're all listening to it for the first time. They were incredible. Um, so what I want to say is this. I was on X just, you know, posting some stuff. And, you know, there was a, there's a woman. I don't know if you all know that I did a, um, an interview with, she asked me to come on her site. She's a hardcore, what you all call gender critical woman. And she might even be here or one of her people here watching. So yeah, I'm going to talk about you right now. So I, uh, she asked me, and I know she's super against trans. She hates everybody. She's extremely mean. She, uh, she just thinks there's no such thing as a trans person. So I'm like, I don't hate, and will you fucking stop it? If I hated you, like I was not mean to you. I, I gave you a chance to speak. I don't have to agree with you. What do you mean I hate you? I don't hate anybody, right? I'm Well, I'm trying to think, do I hate anybody in my personal life? Bro, you would have to do something really serious against me or my family for me to, like, hate you. But I'm just not, I don't feel, I don't, I don't feel the need to bend over backwards in order to be liked. And I don't feel like I need to lie so that everyone will like me. Uh, I, I'm, I'm able to like stand on what I believe. Okay. Well, I'm a transsexual man, so I'll come on your space and, you know, I'm in the 
I'm in the adult entertainment, which she also completely. Really quick, though. You know, there was a, for a long time, Buck used to stand me. So she needs to stop pretending like I reached out to her and was like, oh, please. You know, Bucky, the reason why this all happened was Buck popped up on one of my live streams and was like, hey, da 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 da. And also, I have, I have screenshots of Buck way back in the day under my Jeffrey Marsh posts being like, yeah, I love your content and da 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 keep going. She used to follow me from her Buck Angel like main, uh, main account and I have screenshots of it. She used to follow me on YouTube. So da ba ba or used to be subscribed to me on, on YouTube. So, and I wasn't subscribed back to you. So stop it. You've known about me for a long time and you really just wanted my approval and I couldn't give it to you. I'm sorry because I don't approve of what you're doing. It doesn't mean I hate you. I don't, I don't know you enough to hate you. I think that you're a victim in a lot of ways. I actually have a lot of empathy for you. I think you're, you know, nice enough. I think that the problem is, I think that your history of what you've, you know, uh, propagated towards children, I, I think is just, it's something that you can't come back from, unfortunately. I think it's something that you can't come back from. I think that your participation, your, your participation in the adult industry and in the way that it promotes uh, self-harm, because this whole idea, I'm a man with a vagina and I'm all this and that. And you, you understanding that now pornography is widely available to pretty much anybody who wants it. Children are looking up to this. Teenagers, confused teenagers are looking up to this. And, and it's again, it's it's starting to, and that's grooming these kids into these weird, bizarre sexual practices that are going to harm young women, young lesbians. You're saying that, you know, you are this lesbian, yet you're having sex with men. It's just all of this stuff. He hates and despises. And so I'm willing to have the conversation. So I go on her show where she's just nailing me. If you don't know who it is, her, her podcast on here is called Slightly Twisted Female. That, <laughs> that should give you some understanding. And so I went on, right? I, I don't know her actual real name, but Slightly Twisted Female. Is it not? Is it not? Um, this is my friend. I'm going to bring her up. Ky Ky Kyla, is it not? What's her actual feed? Because I want you oh, to go see. I did an me. actual interview with her. I was... This Kyla lady cannot stand me because Kyla got mad. Kyla was like, you know, Buck is a wonderful role model. She's like, um, I've, basically, she's the mother of a trans identifying uh, female teenager. And she's like, Buck has been a wonderful role model for me, helping my daughter get out of the trans cult. I was like, uh, you might want some, <laughs> I was like, you might want to find some new role models, lady. Like, I don't think, you know, and no offense, but like, uh, yeah, I, I think you need some. And then she like got real mad and like, like I had to block her. I use, I only block like pretty sparingly, but I was like, ba lady, get out of here. <laughs> here we go. It's willing to step up to the plate and have, yeah, and have this sort of conversation with her. And I thought she was going to have that same respect for me. But I did. did. What are you talking about? I did. I was nice to you. I didn't call you names. I know that it looked like I was glazing. It was funny because I watched back. It does look like I'm totally glazing over. And I could tell you're like, uh, but it was because I was reading the comments as you were talking. And I was trying to think of what I wanted to say. And as I was listening to the entire time. And I was very respectful towards you. I did challenge you on some stuff. Um, it, you know, I was, stop it. Will you stop it? She, this, she got mad by the way. This was when, uh, it was me and Brianna Ivy were going back and forth and she hopped in, right? That's when she finally like, and then it was the reason why she did all this is because I was going after Brianna Ivy. Did not. She went after me, which I can sit in the hot seat. I don't know if you all know that about me. I can actually sit in the hot seat. I, I do not have an issue with that because I know myself and I know I'm very grounded in what I believe. I'm very grounded in my knowledge of where I'm at and who I'm at. So I'm not, I am. You're grounded in what you believe. What are you talking about? Because you've changed your perspective within the last year. And I even, I even exposed that during the conversation. You were even like, yeah, people are allowed to change. I was bringing up stuff from like a year and a half ago. You're like, I've changed since then. I've changed since then. So are you that grounded, Susan? Are you that grounded? It seems like you're constantly in flux. And there's a whole lot of cognitive dissonance because you're holding these competing ideas that are just honestly mutually exclusive and trying to make it make sense. In no way, shape, or form, right? 
I'm not no way, shape, or form scared to have a conversation with somebody who hates me. I'm just not. I so I, I accepted her invitation and I went on her podcast here on YouTube. And she just was going at me. You're you're a woman. I know I'm a woman. Like, I come on, not, man. How many times I didn't go at you and say you're a woman. When did I say well, bro, that is bullshit? I said, listen, with all due respect. I'm not going to call you male pronouns. And I explained why. I said, I think it's dangerous to begin shifting this language but for the same exact reason I give every single time. And I've said it a million times. I said, once we start using in common parlance, the language of, uh, you know, saying that like, men can be women, or I'm sorry, saying like, you know, saying using preferred pronouns, it will shift really the definition of what a man and a woman is, right? And it's like, you know, you know, and they think, oh, well, we're not always going to be doing the math in our heads all of the time. Eventually, it's going to shift the official definition. Once the official definition shifts, because we've been using it in that way colloquially for so long, and they change the official definition, which already happened, Laws, the meaning of laws will change. It'll have an impact on every single law where the word woman appears now means something different because they never you know, thought that we were going to ever reach a time in human history where we needed to legally define male and female, man and woman, because they, they just, I guess they never guessed that this whole trans phenomenon was going to happen when we were developing language and developing laws. So I never kept being like, you're a woman, you're a woman. Well, you, that's not fair. That's bullshit. And you know how I know you know what's bullshit, Susan? Because you and I were, were, you know, you still followed me for months after that. And we had like a few, you know, interactions and stuff that were fine. You know, and I never backed down. I never acted like everything was all good. You know, I stood on everything that I said, you know, but we've had a couple of interactions that were totally fine since then. And you even said that it was fine. You thanked me after. Oh, you know, while this plays, hold on. Let me get the let me get the ones afterwards where she was like thanking me. Fuck, I don't think. Times do I have to say it to you all out there? I know I'm a female. I'm not denying it. I've never denied it. What what what's the next question? Can we move forward now? So it started out like that, right? It started out like eh, eh, and so then it went full my... of shit. I'm sorry. I might this just make this a buck angel thing because you're so full of shit. We, we, I might have to just get back and do Stella O'Malley and I'll change the, uh, the thumbnail later. Cause yours, I know we're going to go through the, you're full of shit. You're full of shit. And you know it really fast. Let me. Full of shit. 159 people are watching. Don't forget to like the stream guys. Please don't forget to like the stream, share it if you can. I got to change the name of the stream. Uh, yeah, it started off like that. What are you talking about? What are you talking? I'll even put it on like sp sped up. Then why were you still cool with me for a while afterwards? I know that you know that. Like, I'm not like, <laughs> you're at, like, I think the, po the point is she's just like, again, just trying to mischaracterize our arguments like they always do, like a good trans privilege activist trying to mischaracterize our arguments. Um, hold on. Because again, I, I, I like, you know, the, the, a lot of these like fake gender criticals and stuff think that like, oh, as long as we can get someone to admit that they're really a man or a woman, then the rest is fine and they can do what they want. That's a gen spec position. I know that you know that you're a female. I'm not dumb. But there's other issues. Where where did I hit really quick? Let's just really quick just watch the beginning of this. Let let let's see if what she's saying is fucking even slightly correct. Hello, welcome back to a slightly twisted female. I'm your host, Brittany Rue. I am really excited to have my guest here today, Buck Angel, uh, who I'm sure many of you recognize. It was not hateful, whether, I sound. Whichever side you're on has been, <laughs> yeah, just a really big figure in this um, just moment in culture and in time. And so that's why I really wanted to take a time to talk and kind of go through. We represent, um, you know, different groups 
I mean, you know, different sort of perspectives. And I think that there may be some overlap and there may be some points of contention and hopefully we can work that out. So welcome, Buck. Thank you for joining me. Oh, that's sweet. Thanks so much. I really do appreciate you having me on. You know, I know we probably do have different opinions, but I'm I'm cool with that. And I just really I want to appreciate the fact that you're wanting to at least kind of have a conversation. I don't know, building a bridge, but at least you have me here. And, you know, and it, it, it's not something everyone's willing to do, as you know, on both right. sides. So I do appreciate now that we're going to have this excellent, you know, respectful conversation with each other. Hopefully maybe break some barriers here. Yeah, let's see where it goes. Um, <laughs> chat, hey, everybody. We have 57 people. Excellent. Welcome, everybody. Um, you know, hopefully we'll continue to see that grow. And um, so I guess, you know, I just want to start by just kind of hearing from you just some different things. So, you know, I have criticized you in the past uh, in regards to, you know, we talk a lot about true trans. Um, I've, I've held several spaces about it. I had a debate with Laura Hobbs. Um, you know, I've had a lot of conversations with different people and I wanted to sort of get your perspective on, uh, you know, we talk a lot about this sort of idea of a true transsexual, you know, gender dysphoria versus this, uh, newer iteration of transgenderism, which kind of comes from a lot of the academic queer theory and, and more Marxist ideas. So maybe if you could just clarify for us what what you know you say that you're um oh what what was the term you said something but not woke uh trans but not woke or something like that <laughs> not woke. yeah tell us about, like, what that means well you know what what i mean by that is i live in reality and so woke to me is not necessarily reality and i'm, I'm also um I, I would say i consider myself a liberal and i used to uh, be sort of more on the on that side but i would say now i'm kind of very nuanced middle ground space and so with that's my politics right i don't necessarily politics is a whole other thing, yeah so i came like, out being like you're a woman why won't you admit that you're a woman oh, come on buck Come on. Come on, Susan. Really more middle ground, I think, at this point. And so so I want to, first off, just let you know that I'm a transsexual person. And so when you talk about true trans, I talk about transsexual people, which is what I am. And a there's trans. a difference between what I am and what this generation calling them. Exactly. Exactly. A true. There's a difference between what I am and this other generation calling themselves trans. Yeah, exactly. You're truly trans. You, you guys always talk about how, oh, they're not they're not even trans. We're not, you know, I'm truly trans. Yeah, exactly, Susan. Exactly. So it's transgender, which is an umbrella term, right, that encompasses basically anyone, <laughs> basically anyone who wants to be trans or gender variant or an animal or whatever else is going on over there. I have what I call a medical condition, which is called gender dysphoria. And I have been diagnosed with that 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I took the medical steps that transsexual people take to make myself look like a man so that I can live my life looking like a man. I did not change my biology. I did not change my sex. I changed my appearance. It's what a transsexual. We're very knowledgeable on that. We admit that we are biological male and female. We walk the world in a space that we want to sort of coexist with you, if that makes sense. I, I don't want anybody to know I'm trans. I want people to see me as a man and just kind of put myself into that space, all knowing al all along that it is up to me, not up to you, to make myself not only comfortable, but to also make you comfortable. That's always been the transsexual way. We've never wanted to make you feel uncomfortable. We've always wanted to sort of blend in with you. And now I see a newer generation of people punching you in the face. Right. And that is where I'm like, okay, nope, I have to start to speak up. And I'll be like, it's hot, not easy to sort of speak against your own community. But I realize now that that's not my community anymore. That is, I have no values there. I have no, there's no, nothing that I'm attached to Let's see. in that community. I'm a community, uh, I think of, so I have a me mental disorder, right? I, you know, I don't know what you people are doing over there. You can't self ID as trans. You have to sort of go through a system to make sure what you I think the most profound contribution she's had to this conversation Okay, so what did I say after that? Investigative journalist, a feminist investigative journalist. I think she's done amazing work mm -hmm. to really put this conversation on the map. And uh, one of, I think, the most profound contributions she's had to this conversation was exposing WPATH um, and the people therein who have some major influence with WPATH is, you know, being fetishists involved with, you know, things like the eunuch archives, yes. which has pedophilic, uh, I mean, a straight up pedophilic, you know, just membership or sympathies. There's a whole archive. There's a whole section where people can submit their own sort of fantasy short stories. A lot of these wow. things involve uh, fantasies involving young children, as young as infants, as well as animals. And, you know, <laughs> members of this organization are high ranking officials in WPATH. And what concerns me is that WPATH has a massive influence on the diagnostic uh, criteria manual 
which we use to diagnose things that, I mean, I guess, you know, previously it yeah. was transsexualism and then it was uh, gender or identity disorder, yeah. you yeah. know, and now it's become gender dysphoria. It seems like it, the goalposts are constantly changing. Yeah. So I guess my question to you is, you know, because of the obvious, um, obviously the well is tainted when it comes to things like the diagnostic manuals that professionals use, like That's the right. DSM mm-hmm. and, um, you know, these sort of conflicts of interest. It's sort of like you're having, especially the fact that we're having a lot of trans identifying people who are helping to write the sort of protocols and criteria. It's almost like asking like, you know, an active <laughs> drug addict, to, you know, yeah, to, to sort of define what is, you know, the laws around being, you know, on drugs and peddling yeah. drugs. And That's right. Like that. You know, so what? And my also concern is, especially you know, in Canada, for example, and the US, yeah, wow, where we have really looks like I'm coming at your jugular, Susan. It really looks like I'm coming at your jugular. Yeah, you know, I'm really just you know, just like yeah, you're a woman, you're a woman. Why would you get this? You're bro, shut up. You're fucking disingenuous, and you know it. I pornography, and then it went to you're just making children do this. Then it was, you know, it was never. It was never well, Buck. You know, I don't agree with you. What? That's all. I'm you know, yeah, she bully. She always. She's a bully. So, and that says a, a lot bully. about her. I'm a bully. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, and then I said, "Oh, you made children do this." Okay, let's see how I said that part. Oh, you're making children do. This. Let's see what else did I say? Do Come the on. fact that you know, 20 years ago, the 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 sort of uh, cancer diagnosis that I had was a death sentence. It mm-hmm. was something like you had like a um, like 15% or lower chance wow. of survival. Yeah, I know, survival. guys, I really, uh, you know, now that I'm like, looking back, I was like, wow, I really just was just so cruel to her. We all just, you know, had her up here, she was kind enough to come on, we just were ripping her apart. You know, I let everyone join in like poor. poor um, they made some changes bug. in the protocol and I mean, drastically increased the rate of survival. And also they had originally diagnosed me as stage three as actually stage two. Oh, um, wow. But, you know, I say that to say I, I had to really push. I, I did my own research and I had to push to have this ovarian transpositioning surgery mm-hmm. to get my ovaries out of the field of radiation and which turned out to be a futile but attempt to save my um yeah owner. here's me being really you know rude to her okay here's the part where i brought up the uh the part about childhood transition let's see how did i just did i just point in her face let's see hold on here i'm just, and one of the most oldest transsexuals on the planet right now you have to listen and it's girls who are transitioning not boys it's girls like me right so you, I, these trans Wait, let's see hold on what did i say stop adults from transitioning ever right. you're not gonna um, well then you guys have gone back and forth um no come on it's the internet look uh, like yeah. i said when i started here of course i'm gonna have people who just like hold on let's see all the other ways i think is heinous heinous is like an understatement it, it, it's insane are you i i, I can't yeah, even what I said, oh, wow i'm really just coming drastically increased the rate of survival and also wow. they had originally died there's me as stage three is actually stage two oh, um wow. but you know i say that to say i i had to really push I, I did my own research and i had to push to have this ovarian transpositioning surgery I'm, the reason ovaries. it sounds like we're speaking fast i have it sped up just so that we're not wasting too much time here i'm gonna speed it up a tiny bit more out of the field of radiation and which turned out to be a futile but attempt to save my um ovarian functioning um no. you know because I, I knew the horrors of premature menopause you That's know i was right. 33 years old at the time i was terrified the more that i, I read about premature mm-hmm. menopause um we know that you know for females our synaptic firing in our brain is mm-hmm. dependent on the presence of estrogen right. um you know I, I heard you talk about things like vaginal atrophy uh yeah. and, and you know eventually going septic with the fusing of your yeah. cervix yeah. your uterus and so i guess the hardening of your vaginal walls which is horrific and i'm scared of something very similar mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and, you know, I, I say that, um, so I do feel like I personally have had, uh, I feel such a personal stake in Mm -hmm. warning people about this. You know, I know that my doctors didn't really care or understand about what menopause does to women. Um, they weren't gender medicine doctors. They didn't care. They didn't know. They didn't have much to tell me. I was actually educating them and I just was like doing stuff on Google and learning stuff from Google. Um, you know, so I, I do think it's, if we're throwing young children in early iatrogenic menopause for cosmetic reasons, I think is heinous. Heinous is like an understatement. <laughs> it's insane. Are you? I, I can't even believe we're even having this conversation. I can't even believe it. I can't even believe that we would ever tell a child they can change their sex because I never changed my sex. 
I'm still a biological female. You know that. I'm very attached to that. I speak about it all the time. It's important that I stay attached to it for my own health. She's the one who's brought that up over and over. I never, like, where, I had not even one time I was like, you're a woman. Because I was like, I know. That's the whole point of her platform. And she's like, you know, I acknowledge that I'm a woman. So now I can still keep doing everything else. Like, I get it. That's the, that's, that's the whole, supposed to be the whole selling point of you, Susan. Yeah, I know, Karen, because, yeah, you really want super hot. I would love to see her go with you. I don't think she ever would, but, Karen, I mean, yeah, Buck, if you, you should definitely talk to Karen. Please, someone debate Karen, for the love of God. I, like, need it to happen. But not only that, no child can ever make the choice of what I did. Uh, sterilization comes from that, right? Right. But all kinds of millions of long-term effects are going to come from these kids that we're trying to, and all we're doing is changing their outside, right? You have to understand this is a mental disorder. Right. It's a mental disorder. Why are they not starting with mental health care? Why are they starting with physical health care? That's where I'm like, this. you guys are all backwards. Right. You're, you're throwing so, these kids into a car. Yeah. Accident. I'm going hard in the motherfucking paint. I know. <laughs> Come on. That's bro. what they're doing. Right. Right. Um, and then, you know, and, and just to, um, you know, I know that I think one of the things that, you know, we had just talked about this prior uh, that you and Isaac had gotten into. And yeah. I think the only reason I didn't go real hard on her is because I know she's skittish. Right. But so it's like I knew that I needed to be diplomatic with her. I knew, you know, and it's like, again, and, and also it's like I can I, I think that it's that's the correct thing to do regardless when you're, you know, she she is offering to come onto my plant or uh, channel that is populated with people who vehemently disagree with her, don't like her. You know, I'm allied with people like Karen Davis, who's been like a huge outspoken critic. So it's like, you know, out of respect, you know what I mean? I'm not going to sit there and just like, you know, just like point in the woman's face and flip out at her. I'm not going to take, again, like even like with the whole VF555 thing, when, you know, I, I tried to let her have her moment to speak with, um, Ariel Scarcella, when I was on Ariel Scarcella's Rumble, you know, VF555 came right out of the gate, like, you know, calling her names and, and going, you know, basically like stuttering and flipping out and calling her true and femme and you're a traitor and all this sort of stuff. And Ariel's like, yeah, bro, get out of my face. <laughs> Like, get out of, like, okay, bye. Can we, like, get her out of here? People don't want to talk to you. If you want to be able to get to the heart of what's going on and get them to actually confront stuff with you, you're going to have to be diplomatic, you know? You're going to have to actually, like, speak to them. And again, she's never personally done anything to me. So I can hold her accountable while, at, while also, you know, not sitting there calling her names and stuff, which is not, I don't think that that's, conducive i still stand firmly on what i i know it's like the again idiots like you know vf555 who like gets mad that i don't sit there and call these people names that doesn't mean i agree or co-sign anything that they're saying or do just because i'm not throwing ad hominins at her and and you know cursing at her and totally disrespecting her as a human being she is still a human being Right. Like it's like so I don't have to respect anything that she's doing. I'm calling out the stuff that she's doing, you know. But again, it's like at the same time, I still she's a perpetrator of this, but she's also a victim. And it's possible to be both. I think she's been heavily victimized. I think that she's been used by this industry. I think that she's been used by the porno. She see she thinks she's in control with pornography. She's not. You know, she's being objectified and used and it's or she's it's. She's, I think, racked with addiction and self-harm. You know, people who use drugs, you think, oh, well, they're choosing to use the drug. They're in control. Just because they're the ones physically putting the drug in themselves doesn't mean that they're in control. I think Susan has a lot of mental health issues, histrionics, a, a, you know, a burning need to be loved and accepted, maybe a fear of rejection, addiction, a lot of comorbidities, you know, a complex sexuality probably a lot of trauma in her background. And so I also recognize that not only am I dealing with a perpetrator, I'm dealing with a woman who is a victim. I'm dealing with both. So she needs to be called out for the perpetrator that she is, you know, but also understood and, and, and respected in the ways that she is a victim, right? Because we're not going to be able to pull more women back to safety if we can't see the ways in which they're victims, even if they, unfortunately, a lot of you know people who are victimized and groomed can, you know, can them themselves continue to uh, perpetuate the same thing that was that caused them the harm and then they become the perpetrators. Um, 
Karen Davis, who's actually here, who okay. you know, I consider you know, a colleague. She goes, mine, okay, but, look uh, at her panic, because I bring up Karen Davis. Hold on. <laughs> Karen. Karen. God, I love Karen. Hold on. Well, you guys have gone back and forth. Um, no, come on. But I did, but I'm sorry. <laughs> I wanted... What effects are going to come from these kids that we're trying to, and all we're doing is changing their outside, right? You have to understand this is a mental disorder. Sorry. It's a mental I'm disorder. sorry. I could not stand Nightmare Neil. I fucking hated Nightmare Neil because all he did was steal all of our talking points and then just like repackage them. And then he even to the point where he literally was stealing stuff from Exalanzac. He literally started a series called Jazz's Waking Nightmare until everybody's like, bro, what the fuck are you doing? I could not stand stand him and it was just annoying because it was like again everybody loves it when it's coming from like some man stealing more from women and yet you know and, and he was getting like just yeah i was like no i could not stand I'm sorry I stand. why are they not starting with mental health care why are they starting with physical health care that's where i'm like this you guys are all backwards right you're, you're throwing so, these kids into a car accident wreck. that's what they're doing right right um and then you know and, and just to um, you know, I know. But why is it okay for Susan to critique, like, real quick, right? Yeah, let me, like, why is it okay that Susan goes and dunks on all of these other trans-identifying people, and that's reasonable and okay, but if we critique her and her hold her to account, well, then it's hate. It's hateful. She is still a total TPA. Oh, hold on. Damn it. My thing is, um... I know that X does jazz as well, Waking Nightmare, but Nightmare Neil did a thing that he literally tried to do while X Lanzic was still actively doing Jazz's Waking Nightmare. Nightmare Neil started a series called Jazz's Waking Nightmare. Everybody's like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? Um, all right, so here, okay, again, here's the part where she was like, hold on, saying that I, hold on. Oh, man, I know I'm a woman. Like, come on, man. How many times do I have to say it to you all out there? I know I'm a female. I'm not denying it. I've never denied it. What? What? What's the next question? Can we move forward now? So it started out like that, right? No, it, it started didn't. out like, eh, eh. And then it went to my pornography. And then it went to, you're just making children do this. Then it was, you know, oh, it was right. Never... That's how I said it. Here's what I said when I brought up the fact that you talked about grooming a child. Oh, that I think one of the things that, you know, we had just talked about this prior uh, that you and Isaac had gotten into. And yeah. I think Karen Davis, who's actually here, who okay. you know, I consider, you know, a colleague of mine. Cool. cool. Uh, yeah. Who I think is great. You know, and I know that you guys have gone back and forth. Um, <laughs> no, come on. It's the internet. Look, like I said, when I started here, of course, I'm going to have people who dislike me here. Of course, I'm sure they're saying all kinds of things. That's okay. I'm not here for that. I'm here to have the conversation with you. Everyone can have their own opinion about me. It's not, you know, it's not going to make or break me. I'm not, I'm not going to go away. But that, yeah. that being said, I'm here to have a conversation with you and people can throw all kinds of stuff at me. You know that friend, they do it all day long. You, you don't think, you, you don't think the trans community hates me. <laughs> they hate me. They hate <laughs> my own people, right? Hate me. So I, I'm here because I know I'm willing to take the jabs, you know, that yeah. because I care about kids. I'm only right. here for the kids. Just so everybody knows. An adult can do whatever they want. You're never going to... That's not true. You're here because you see that the tide is changing. You were a full-on TPA like two, three years ago. You started to see that the tide was changing, that people were really getting really angry, and you, you also were getting mad. The real reason that people like Buck Angel and Blair White really latched on to this gender-critical thing, again, because it made them stand out from the other trans people. It made them seem special. They were getting frustrated that the whole trans narrative was being dominated by it. Now it was like anybody could be it. They were no longer the special, unique trans, and they wanted to gatekeep transsexualism. They're like, no, we paid all this money. We put in all this work. We are the ones with trans. You have to listen to us. All those other people, they don't count. It has nothing. They don't care about kids. She doesn't care about kids because she, she's influencing kids to this day. She says, hey, kids, and all this sort of stuff. She wants to talk to kids. She's been doing a lot with kids. The problem is, is that being trans was her bread and butter. That's her big shtick. It's like a sideshow. That, that's what she was profiting off of, the man with a vagina, right? She could go around, go on Howard Stern, you know, go on these other podcasts, and it was all special. Now that trans blew up and became this big thing, it was like not special anymore. And she wanted to get back in control of the narrative. Be like, no, 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 no. No, these people aren't real. I'm the real trans. Yeah, don't listen to them. They're they're BS. That's why. Because then you could sit there and you could criticize some trans people now. That's what it's about. 
stop adults from transitioning ever. Yeah. You're not going to do that. That's that should not be your end goal she, here. Has your she made is, money is, on yeah. porn? She makes tons of money on porn. Not only does she make money on porn, she makes money on sex products and uh, sex products that are targeted to trans identifying females. So she makes products that are meant for, you know, with, like gender dysphoric, other gender dysphoric lesbians and women so that they could, you know, and again, she's promoting that We this. need to focus on kids. And I'm an ally with you, by the way. I do not believe children should ever be in a space to transition, nor do I believe that we can literally tell children that they can change their sex. This is right. all bullshit, all of it. And I'm here to tell you that. that. That's why you can disagree with what I did. That's perfectly okay. I have no issues with that. What right. I have issues with is me and you have to come together for the children. Right. Period. And I'm an, if I have 30 years experience as a transsexual, they're listening to me, by the way, because I'm a person of lived experience. So I can step up to the plate and talk to the senators and talk, which I'm doing, talking to everybody saying, hey, hold on here. I'm one of the most oldest transsexuals on the planet right now. You have to listen. And it's girls who are transitioning, not boys. It's girls like me. Right. So you know, I, These trans women who are biological males, as we all know, are speaking over me for young girls. Get out of my way. Right. Sit down. Yeah. And, which I think is, is important to, you know, it just, it's interesting because it's like, even after transition, we still in so many ways, sort of, you know, it seems like people retain in a lot of ways, the space yeah. as being, you know, male or female, like under, you know, patriarchy. Um, oh, that's right. You know, and, and I guess, you know, just to um, challenge you a little bit. <laughs> oh, here's me coming out swinging. I literally just said, oh, you know, just to challenge you a little bit, you know, here's me just being so mean and out of control. It's, Listen. it's girls like me. Right. So you know, I, These trans women who are biological males, as we all know, are speaking over me for young girls. Get out of my way. Right. Sit down. You know, which I think is, is important to, you know, it just, it's interesting because it's like, even after transition, we still in so many ways sort of, you know, it seems like people retain in a lot of ways, the space yeah. as being, you know, male or female, like under, you know, patriarchy. Just listen, um, listen to this right. part, you know, and, and I guess, you know, just to, um, challenge you a little bit. <laughs> right on. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, want, I did want to ask you about, you know, some statements that you had made earlier okay. and sure. if you were, you know, willing like to just sort of talk about yeah. that sort yeah, of in context of and that's just so I'm not paraphrasing you because I don't like doing that. I don't think that that's oh, helpful. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to bring up one now. This is, this is from my my loveliest Karen, but let's just, I just wanted to, she did have a clip that I did want to so challenge. So I even just said, I said, listen, you know, if it's okay, I will let you just challenge you a little bit, you know, um, and because I don't want to paraphrase you, I think it's important to use your actual words. I'm going to bring up, you know, a clip that you did and I just want to hear what your thoughts are. Yeah, this is me really coming at her fucking neck. Like, you totally, Susan. I'm just me. I bullied you the whole time. I did a call-in show. I let everybody else take shots at you. We were making fun of you like totally come on stop it okay cool cool right on yeah i do have a concern let's see it's, uh, it's a little give or take here we go without further ado i do have a concern with youngsters and that could be anywhere from the age of 10 to possibly 14 maybe even lower than that 10 and below you know i have a kid that i work with here in los angeles who's eight years old on home blockers that's right and he's doing great everything is awesome i see him taking the next level he went through a large amount of mental health care he went through a system parents i talk right. did you hear that oh, I, you well, hear this um yes yeah. i thought that was you no, no, I 100% said that. And I'm very open to the fact that I used to be pro puby blockers. I used to be pro transitioning children because I did meet a kid here. And I've since retracted that, by the way. You are allowed to change your mind, people. That is actually very important that you I know. I wanted to let more Karen go, but the problem is I didn't already know what Karen was about to say. I couldn't remember. And I just wanted to be really careful about what I was throwing at her because I didn't want her to like, I was, my biggest fear was that she was going to end the interview. Was she was gonna be like, you know, what? I'm done. I'm out of here. And I wanted time to like hold her to account for these different things. And then I went on to do like a three hour post stream where then like we just went in on everything. Right. And I knew that like we could all then kind of go back and like, but I just thought it was so, I, to me, the most important thing was to force her to acknowledge these inconsistencies in her rhetoric. She literally just two seconds ago said, I don't believe any child should ever be put in a place to transition. So then luckily, thanks to Karen Davis, who is like, uh, I mean, has created this amazing archive that's preserved all of this stuff with her Odyssey channel, formerly her Your Kid and Rate channel. I was able to pull up this clip because of her and be like, well, well, hold on. You're talking about how you're this big champion 
for protecting kids, but you just said this, and it wasn't that long ago. You, you participated in this. You cannot bury this stuff. You know, it's important. Like, and I, it was just important for me to put that in front of her and then have her force her to deal with the, the uh, you know, the inconsistencies and the hypocrisies in her rhetoric versus her actual track record. I thought that that was more valuable for us than me just sitting there getting in her face and telling her off. Because if you do not let people change their mind, you're not going to get anywhere and I'm not going to get anywhere. I'm allowed to change my mind because at that. Oh, poor Kate. Kate. Uh, so Kate says, who the hell is this Karen Davis? She looks like a welfare queen. Whoa, you fucking racist piece of shit. You fucking racist piece of shit. Hold on. Where are any, do I have any uh, moderators in here? Are, are you mad? Is that you, Buck? Are you mad? I'm about to make, you know who I'm about to make a, uh, hold on, you, you scumbag. You fucking scumbag. Hold on for one second. Hey, hey. Let's see. Um, hold on, let me find it. Yeah, no, get get out of here with this. You better you, <laughs> watch your mouth. Let me see. Um, all right, let's see. I need a backup because I think... Somebody who's here a lot. Susie, you want, can you be, can I add you as a mod? Susie Glucksman. Susie Glucksman. Is that okay? I'm just going to make Susie. I'm just going to assume I'm going to add you. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, I can take you off later if you don't want, but uh, yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Cause Susie, you're here a lot and I trust you. Susie's got, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Yeah, I was really, really, you know, really going at the jugular. At the time, it. I was being indoctrinated into the thought process by the Children's Hospital here in Los Angeles. No, yeah, I I don't think it's, uh, I mean, well, so life sucks, to be honest. She says, as much as I don't like Buck, I will say I don't think she's racist. Kate is definitely some AGP. I also think that we should also not overly assume. I think that Buck, I, I don't think Buck's racist either, but I also don't assume to know who Buck really is because I don't think that who she shows us is who she really is on any level, but it's definitely like a Buck angel flying monkey for sure. And she's got a lot of unhinged followers. Angeles with that eight year old kid that I was literally next to watching the whole thing happen. And I was like, wow, this is incredible. I can't believe we can do this and tell people like you are like, fuck throwing me all kinds of stuff. I'm like, hold up. I got to read this. And that's when I was like, Oh, I see what's happening. So you've got to give me, well, I'm just being honest here. I said it, 100% I said it. I believed it. I was for it. And I have since changed my mind and have said that that was wrong. I should have never said that. So do you apologize? 100%. For constantly. Why do you think I'm on the front oh, line? Oh, wow. Look at me really going at her neck. See, I just wanted to give her awkward space to talk. And I feel like there was times that she wanted me to take over. And I just like stayed kind of quiet so that she had to keep it. Because I knew Buck's the type of person who does not feel comfortable in silence. She can't just sit... And let something kind of like, you know, stew. I feel like if I didn't rescue her or like, I think she's used to people kind of filling in for her and be like, yeah, you know, we know that you think this and, and coddling her the whole time. I wanted to force her to really sit and explain herself and I wasn't going to rescue her. I wasn't like, yeah, no, I bet you probably felt, you know, you probably changed your mind. And yeah, we know that you've done good work now. The problem is people make too many assumptions. They're like, yeah, you probably, you know, you, like this, whatever. You know, when you actually, let's actually verify her track record. Let's actually look at what she's done and said, not just assume just because she says, oh, I'm on this side now. Right. Let's really look at it. I'm on the front lines of making sure these kids don't take those puberty blockers for oh. that reason, because I'm part of that. Uh, yeah, have you followed up with any of Karen? So somebody is very triggered at <laughs> very triggered by your intelligence and your unwavering and uncompromising stance against these narcissists. And so they're just making some like really disgusting, vile comments. But we got them out of here. And it, it just honestly, Karen, it's just to show that you're you're really a threat to these people. These kids, do you have any, like, knowledge of... Um, kid. One kid. Oh, kid. Okay. Only one. Yes, I do. Yeah. I'm in very constant contact with the mother. In fact, I just talked to her last week. Okay. Yep, totally. Look I'm how nervous she is. Just because you felt nervous, ma'am, 
doesn't mean that I was doing anything to you. She's talking like that. And look, you can tell she's she's got to be lying here because her body language gets so weird. She's like kind of like hiding her mouth. She's like, yeah, one, one kid. The only reason she's saying one kid because we only have proof of one kid, of her talking about one kid, right? We don't know that. And it's like, no, no, you, you, you influenced a whole hell of a lot of people. Watching yeah. everything that's happening for many reasons. First off, because I don't want the kid to grow up to be a complete mess. But secondly, I want to see what's going to happen with this kid. How many, right? Can I ask how many years ago that was? Like yeah, that was, uh, gosh, gosh, it has to be like, oh, I think the kid is 16 now. Okay. So eight years ago. So um, have they started? Uh, high school, they're in high school, they're doing have great. Have they started on the cross-sex hormones yet? Yes. I can hear. Oh, if you are, I can unblock Kate if we want to figure out who it is. You know, that's up to you. <laughs> I don't think, oh, I can't unblock it. Oh, well, maybe Kate will make another sock account and we can get a feel for who it is. Uh, yeah, like Kayla Carpenter says, these people are very fake and could easily disguise themselves under different handles and say whatever they want. When these people are pushed, you'd be surprised how they show. Exactly. When they can hide behind, a, uh, you'd be amazed how when people hide can hide behind a sock account. Like we see it with Sierra a lot get behind a sock account, then they can really like spew out the real stuff, you know? Buck knows how to coordinate herself in front of, she, she's an actress, she is. She's she's good at like, you know, kind of conducting herself and, and playing to who, whoever her audience is. Yes. So, yes. so the child's then sterilized at this point. Oh, yeah, totally. No, yeah. no doubt. You would never know that, she, you know, he or she, whatever you want to call, she is now he. You would never know that they were uh, ever a girl, ever. Yeah. But, but. We know there are definite long term. And the mom talks to me constantly. I'm scared, Buck. I, don't, I said, I know. I, I'm sorry. But, you know, that doctor, Dr. Olson at the Los Angeles Dr. Children's Olson. Hospital, that's right. She's the one who just throws these hormones at kids like it's candy Dr. with Olson. no evaluations. What, what was the uh, hospital? Do and Dr. that's Olson. exactly the problem. So, life sucks, to be honest, as I feel like if someone uh, decides to make porn, there should be a social contract that they should stay away from kids, including having adopting their own. And the biggest problem was is that she was promoting her pornography. On Twitter, which again, Twitter lets you post anything, also promoting her sex toys while talking about, you know, gender and trying to so-called help kids and help them, you know, challenge like gender ideology and all this sort of stuff. And it's like, so they can just come to her Twitter and then discover all of this stuff where she has a whole team of these, you know, young girls these young women who think that they're gay men under, you know, Buck. Again, and Buck always talks about how, oh, yeah, I was the first one. I, there were no trans uh, trans men in the porn scene. I was the first ever one. Now there's a ton, and it's because of you, Buck. You started that. And these women are self-harming with all these, you know, medications, and it's becoming a fetish. I'm sure there's plenty of men these, you know, straight men or bisexual men or whatever who are attracted to the idea, men like Phil Illy, who are attracted to the idea of these women who are trans identifying females, who they're female, but then they're like, you know, have like these like characteristics of breasts. You know what? Men love to fuck new and exciting things. This idea that, oh, he looks like a man, but it's really a woman. And that's kind of interesting and hot. And now they're jerking off to it. Now they're developing like a taste for that. And they want more of that. And whenever men want more of something and have a taste for something, there's always going to be somebody finding a way to fill that demand. And that's how we get sex trafficking. That's how we get grooming. That's how we get these predator surgeons and stuff. Again, it's a lot of these surgeons and these doctors. If you look at a lot of these gender surgeons or these gender doctors, I was going through this with Richard Adamene, and we were looking at his gender um clinician this guy is like he's a ther he's a gender therapist but then he's also does like bdsm work with couples and stuff and it's like oh they like to grow they're into this sort of sex stuff it's like the sexologist the ray blanchard people in gen spec um you know they love to study the thing that they're interested in that they're excited by they love understanding more about their own sexuality and then they groom people into it because they are get put in these positions of power you know, Susan, you had a responsibility and I'm sorry because of all the harm you did. I'm sorry. I don't think that you get to now go on and have a gender critical platform unless and until you complete. I think you need to work on going on and making amends for everything. Go and try to fix all the harm that you've done. But it doesn't mean go and profit and, and get all the social media clout. You can do it behind the scenes. I don't think that you need to continue to have a voice. You've already demonstrated that you have very poor judgment, very poor critical thinking skills. You've done so much harm 
You don't get to continue to profit now that you've just changed your mind. And we just, oh, she changed her mind. It's okay. We'll just forgive everything else. Now she can go on and go get, you know, super chats on YouTube and make a living off YouTube, you know, pretending to be critical of the things that she created. And it's the Los Angeles Children's Hospital. Look into it. They're, they're the ones who are really pushing the puberty blockers. Okay. Yeah, you know, I just think it's real. So I just had a couple of days ago as a Joanne, it's a woman, Joanna. Uh, yeah, yeah, wow, really. It, the whole conversation was basically that, okay? Like you guys can hear, let's hear the rest of what she said. The whole conversation is basically that. It was never well, Buck. You know, I don't agree with you. You know, yeah, she bully. She always, she's a bully. So, and that says a lot about her. She's not grounded. She's oh, very what? insecure. She's extremely insecure about herself. She's How? extremely disconnected. She Yeah, I'm the insecure one, Buck. Right? I, yeah, not not you, the person who has to like come up with a whole avatar for themselves. Not you, who doesn't even go by their own rightful name. Not you, who had to go through these like elaborate, extensive medical procedures to be literally anybody but yourself. Not you, who goes around and tries to get everyone to like them, even if it's like totally conflicting things and wants to be liked and accepted and approved of by everybody. Buck, if I was that insecure, I would have sat there and kissed your ass and, and, and begged you to let me come on your channel and let's collaborate more in the future. Yeah, I'm so, I'm so insecure. I'm so, so insecure. I can't, you know, bear to be like, who, yeah, come on, bro. You like, you stop. Doesn't it. really want to create a better space. She wants to create the toxic stuff that she keeps talking. So that's why she's full of shit. She doesn't want to make a better place. She wants to keep this energy, this angry energy going. You're never going to change things with angry energy. You're not. So I realized she's not willing to actually make change, but I did the interview and it was fine. At the end of the interview, she goes, are you willing to apologize for your porn? What? I didn't ask what? you to apologize you for your porn. I asked you, I said, are you, you guys heard it. I said, are you going to apologize? Hey, Susan, apologize for grooming an eight-year-old little girl who you just acknowledged on screen, you fucking degenerate, that you helped and you, you got in with her mother. What, were you banging the mom? What, were you like in some kind of like sexual relation with the mom? And then what, you were spending time with the kid and getting the kid hooked up with a bunch of predators? Drugging this kid? Finn saying, yeah, you could be like me. I can be there like Trampa Buck. And then, of course, you know, once 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 you realize like that you totally fucked up, you gave this kid Lupron. Hey, by the way, Susan, Lupron, you know, puberty blockers is a cancer drug for men with prostate cancer. You're giving cancer treatments to little girls, followed by cross-sex hormones, testosterone, the same drug that almost killed you, you crazy, crazy asshole. Yeah, I asked, are you sorry? Are you sorry that you took it? I have a nine-year-old son. I have a nine-year-old son. Yeah, I'm sorry, I take it personally. I take it fucking personally that you take a little girl who wants to just to be loved and accepted and that you preyed upon some single mom out there who's probably has no support network, no direction. This little girl who's probably like a, a, a pre-sexual lesbian, you know, a, a future lesbian who's gender non-conforming, who should have been protected. Who should have been allowed to be safe? Who should have been said that, no, you are okay for the little girl that you are. Continue to grow. You introduce these highly adult concepts of sex and gender and sexuality and drug use and, and extreme body modification. You sterilize the little girl who one, what might one day want a family. Maybe she's bisexual. Maybe she's heterosexual. I don't know. Who might one day want a family or she's a lesbian. And again, I'm saying like, you know, team up with some gay men. You rob that from her? Was well, it some kind of an experiment? And you were hoping that then you could, you know, use that. And, you, you know, these other like young women that you, you use for your porn troupe.
Yeah, I asked if you're sorry. Because you sit there and you talk about how you think it's so heinous and insane and horrible that, that any child, you know, should be transitioned. Then I'm like, hey, well, what about the time when you sit there and you used to brag about when you did it? You're like, oh, yeah, well, I am, yeah, I guess that did happen. It's, it's really bad. And of course, of course, of course, you sit there and you wash your hands of it afterwards. You go and you start your gender critical thing when you ruin this family's lives. You sit there and you talk about how this single mother calls you because she's terrified that she just destroyed her own daughter's life at your fucking guidance. And you're like, yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know what to do. Never mind that you almost died from shooting testosterone in your ass on a daily basis. Oh, yeah, I went septic. No big deal. I'm going to just, you know, I'm still going to sit here and guide this little girl towards the path of hell that is lined in drugs and sex and, and, and misery and pain. Yeah, I asked you if you're fucking sorry. Yeah. Yeah, I asked you if you're fucking sorry for destroying a child's life who's the same age as my son. Fuck are you talking about? No, I'm not sorry. Fuck you. Fuck you. You out of your mind. I, do, you know, do you know how scary and horrifying and terrifying it would be to realize, like, oh, my God. Fuck, I'm so dumb. I was. All of us can relate to being like, fuck, I was lied to. These people made me think that this was I was doing the right thing for, for, for my child or, or whoever, right? you know, doing the right thing, and oh my god, no, it was such a mistake, this mom is like, god damn it, no, I believed you, I believed you, you're charismatic, Susan, you're an actress, you, she lives in Hollywood, the woman lives out in California, she's an actress, she's a, you know, she goes on all this sort of stuff, you rope people in with your love bombing and your manipulation strategies, and they believe you. Same thing you say, oh, I go to the Senate. I have, I'm the world's oldest transsexual. They should believe me. I have the most experience. People believe you. I'm so, not, a lot of people are not that smart. Let's be real. A lot of people are easy to manipulate because they're really just not the world's brightest. Maybe this mom is a really good mom and she just really fucking believed you. Maybe you kind of got in her head or whatever. You were supposed to know. And then now, you know, it's, she's like, oh my God, I'm scared. I'm scared. And you're going, like, yeah, I know. It's horrible. Sorry, I got to go. I, you know, we got, I got to go do an interview. Got to look at you, look at you up there, you know, making money off the same now now you're speaking against the rhetoric that you sold to a bunch of kids at one point. Shame on you. Shame on you. And you're going to tell I bullied you. I don't give a fuck. I, I was as nice to you as I could have possibly been. I don't give a fuck. Get out of here. You're willing to apologize because you're an a-hole? Like, I never said that. I apologize for my work. I actually like my work. And I actually believe in my work. You don't have to watch. I never said you apologize because you're an asshole. Hold on. Let's talk about where I got into the porn stuff. It's it, The problem is it's not the porn, which is gross and disgusting and weird. The problem is that you sit there, you, you, you cannot have a platform that is meant to talk to kids. Hey, kids, Trampa Buck here. Hey, kids, I'm looking out for the kids. Oops, I care about the kids. Hey, kids, you know, if you want to know what the deal is, hey, kids, come listen to me. You, you, there, you, I, you used to even go around and they did a whole segment on you saying that you wanted to be in charge of, you know, revamping sex education for kids. Yeah, it's a problem. Oh, no, hold on. Let's go take a look at that real quick, Susan. Let's see. Uh, oh, God, here we that one. Let's see. Buck, angel, sex. Right? Like, 
watch any of my movies ever. And no, my movies are for adults, people. Just stop trying to blame me because other people are so insecure about themselves and their husband, her husband or boyfriend is probably in the other room watching porn oh. instead of having sex with her. So she's all pissed at the porn industry. Oh, here we go. You sound like a real autogynophile, Susan. Do you know how many AGPs say the same dumb thing? Yeah, your boyfriend probably, you probably caught your boyfriend in bed with a trans woman. <laughs> not, no, Marcus is not interested in seeing some creepy, elderly, 60-something-year-old woman go, ah, ah, ah. Jumping all over some young dude who's just sitting there smirking. Or, or seeing, watching you fist some, like, young man. Yeah, no, 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 Susan. Marcus is good, but th thanks. Yeah, I mean, your sex life looks real fulfilling. It totally doesn't look like, you know, some drug-fueled, like, creep session. With a bunch of strangers acting out addictions who probably go home and feel so, look in the mirror and don't even recognize themselves anymore. Yeah, I'll pass. I'll pass. Oh, let's hear that again. Change. But I did the interview and it was fine. At the end of the interview, she goes, are you willing to apologize for your porn? What? I Are never, you willing I to apologize because you're an a-hole? Like, never I'm not going to apologize for my work. I actually like my work. And I actually believe in my work. You don't have to watch any of my movies ever. And no, my movies are for adults, people. Just stop trying to blame me because other people are so insecure about themselves and their husband. Her husband or boyfriend is probably in the other room. Wait, Ann Beamer says, I haven't watched her work, but ain't it quite tame by today's standards? You mean Buck's pornography? There is nothing tame about the, the stuff that this woman does is hardcore. And it's like off the map. It is hardcore. It's like terrifying watching porn instead of having sex with her so she's all pissed at the porn industry instead of yeah. trying to like figure out why her boyfriend doesn't want to have sex with her and yeah my boyfriend doesn't want to fuck me i'm so ugly my pussy is so whack he wants to fuck some uh old woman who shoots testosterone in her ass who's suffering from vaginal atrophy and clitoral megaly yeah you you got it susan yeah, Marcus is, you know, like, I dropped the digits. You know, let me just be real with myself. He he wants someone with vaginal stenosis and, and, like, you know, like, toughening, like, vaginal walls. You got it. <laughs> who mastectomied her breast. Come on, bro. Who has, like, who, who looks like Popeye the Sailor Man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just can't get him to touch me. I'm just so, like, lonely and alone. Like, come on. Instead wants to wank off to porn. So that's right, slightly twisted female. <laughs> why don't you kind of think, why don't you take responsibility for yourself? So anyway, so anyway, there she is on Twitter actually talking shit about AIDS. Are you, about AIDS. And she called a gay man some insane like AIDS infested, like she was so mean. You got yeah, Brianna Ivy, some uh, Brianna Ivy, who's a sex worker who came from me and my family. Yeah, Brianna Ivy, who is a transsex, who is one of your transsexuals, trans identified males. Who, uh, yeah, no, I did, I did. You're right. I did call them AIDS infested because according to the CDC, the Centers of Disease Control, and let's take a look, let's take a look, CDC trans women HIV rate, let's take a look. Oh, okay, transgender women and men are at high risk for getting HIV, I'll bet. You know, I, I bet there might be more who have to do. That's probably why she, I wonder if that's why she flipped out about the HIV thing. 
I wonder if there's something more going on with Susan. Because, again, she's been involved with a whole lot of, you know, anal sex with men, with, with you know, men who identify as gay and all this sort of stuff. Let's see. Transgender have HIV and the percentage is much higher among black or African-American, 44 percent, and Hispanic or Latina, 26 percent of transgender women. <clears throat> 44%, right? Brianna Ivy is Puerto Rican, so Latina, and I think it's higher than that, right? That the insane that rate is one in three people, one in four, one, one in two. Yeah, and, and then being a sex worker on top of it. He came from my family out of nowhere, disrespected my boyfriend out of nowhere, made bizarre racial uh and like racist comments and, and you know uh, uh assumptions about my black boyfriend yeah yeah i came for him back not sorry don't care oh that they were uh, ever a girl ever yeah. but but you know guys i will not tolerate that i grew up in, on some level in the aids I'm epidemic sorry. i lost all of my friends okay it will make me cry. You know that. Whenever I speak about AIDS, it hits me in my heart. It hits me in every being of myself. And when I see a woman, a straight woman who is expecting respect from everyone else, but she turns around and used AIDS as a means and a way to poke at a gay man who pop uh, A gay man who identifies as a straight woman who is sleeping with men who identify as straight, who just like you goes around and tells other straight women that, hey, I could steal your man, sis. Oh, what are you jealous because your man really wants me? These men who get off on the idea of bagging the boyfriends of straight women. It matters to me, Susan. Because that puts straight women at risk. This isn't the 80s anymore, Susan. Back in the 80s, we didn't understand how HIV transmission or infection worked. Back in the 80s and early 90s, it, it just sort of hit gay men like, like a, a, a bag of bricks. They didn't understand why or how it was happening. This is 2024. We understand how to protect against HIV. <laughs> We understand how to uh, treat it. So, no, miss me with the bullshit. If this man decides to live a risky life and again, HIV through contracted through behaviors, self-indulgent behaviors like promiscuous sex and sex work, selling your body, trying to get men you know, uh, uh, straight men part who are partnered with women and try to get them to sleep with him, putting women at risk. Yeah, I don't give, I don't care. This isn't the 80s anymore. This isn't the 80s anymore. What do you, you cry for what? You're not a gay man. Weren't you just like, weren't you just like ragging on AGPs? It's like, he'll sit there to them. He's talking about, oh, like it's a problem that I'm a straight woman. But then you're like, well, you, you, you're ragging on all these AGPs. But I feel like the reason why she's probably crying again, we, do we know what Susan's status is? I don't know. You know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe something hit a little close to home. I don't know. I don't know, because that seemed to really... Say, I've said other mean things to Brianna that, like, Buck Angel got offended about, but some reason that HIV comment set her, like, on fire. I don't know. You guys, do you guys decide? Possibly even has AIDS or HIV. I lost it. There is no way I will tolerate that from anybody, just so you know. From anybody. If you are going to be that person, you should leave now. Oh, you know who it probably is? The Lee 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 person. It's probably, uh, or or Kate or Lee or whoever. It's probably the one, there's the, the one lady who I just said who has the trans identifying daughter who's like, I look up to Buck. That lady is everywhere. And she comes out in defense of Buck all the time. I'll, I would not be surprised if it's that lady. 
You should leave now. I had to deal with that. I was in the center of the AIDS epidemic, lost all my friends. I could go on and on and on and tell you the tragedy that it was for us, the insanity that it was for us. It lives in. Yeah, because back then you were a lesbian woman. You were living as a lesbian woman, even though you're bisexual, right? And lesbian women were well known for coming out and taking care of uh, uh, gay men who had been hit by the AIDS and HIV ec epidemic, by the AIDS epidemic. What was the thanks? What was the thanks of gay men for lesbian women who rode out for them, who were the ones who did hospice care back when everyone was even afraid to touch these men because we didn't understand how it was transmitted. It was lesbian women who were sitting with them in hospice, holding their hand, you know, getting them a new, like, uh, uh, ice pack feeding them, loving them, making quilts for them. Lesbian women were riding out. What, what was the thanks that came, you know, 20 years later, gay men are, are sitting here spearheading this ideology that has decimated, decimated lesbian spaces. Decimated lesbian spaces. Yeah, at first she was somewhat in it. Now she's at the center. Make up your mind. Yeah, which is it, Susan? Which is it? In my body, I have trauma from it because I lost. Here we go. The performative crying. The performative mm. crying. <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> I don't want, I really don't want my stream to get pulled. So I don't know if me making it like laughing at her right now is going to be bad, but like. <laughs> the insensitivity of people who want what they want, but are not willing on any way, shape or form to know that other people exist in this world, not just them. And for a woman who says she wants people to get back to some sense of reality spews the most insane hate at the LGBT community. No. She does not want. The fact that everyone tried to make that as if I was going against gay men. I was going against one man. One man who is a sex worker, who has sex with men, who is a trans-identified male, who falls in one of the highest ranges of infection groups. One man. And I'm sorry, it sounds more homophobic of you guys, of all the people who somehow try to make that as if I was being homophobic against gay men as a whole. I never brought up gay men. That was you guys. Hit dog holler? Confused, because I never said that. You guys sound homophobic. That it's like this first second you hear AIDS, you're like, he, it's gay men. He's being mean to gay men. And also, it's funny because, again, uh, by the way, Brianna Ivy identifies as a trans woman. He doesn't identify as a gay man, even though that's what he is. He identifies as a trans woman. So you keep calling him a gay man, gay man. You should have said what it was. This is an autogynophilic, trans-identifying male. You brought gay men into this. Even though he's technically a gay man, but you the one who brought them into this. Disingenuous. None of, she does not want any of us to get along with each other. She's nasty. She's mean. She's intolerant. She's part of the problem. And I stepped up and went on that woman's podcast. Now, I'm not asking you for accolades. I'm not asking you to pat me on the back. I'm showing you the, my integrity. Okay. My integrity is that I'm willing to have conversations with you all. But what I'm not willing to do is listen to you be hateful and mean and disgusting because you think you get to speak that way. You don't get to. What I think is hateful and mean and disgusting is you transitioning children. What I think is mean, hateful, and disgusting is you peddling sex, uh, hardcore sex products to children. What I think is mean, hateful, and disgusting is you pushing gender ideology onto the children of this world. What I think is mean, hateful, and disgusting is you pretending that you're a gay man and saying that, oh, gay, let's talk about homophobia, shall we, Buck? Oh, let's really quick. You're this big champion of, of gay rights and all this sort of stuff. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. How about this then? Susan, how about this? Where is it? 
Oh, here we go. Let's see how Book says she was very proud of creating a category in gay male porn. You don't even need a penis to make it as a male porn star. Buck Angel was I'm gonna the first slow it down. ever to penetrate the main. Hold on, I gotta slow it down because it's hard to. Uh... Oh, I don't know. adult entertainment industry, the world's only porn actor of his kind. The man with a vagina has produced and starred in award-winning hardcore scenes with straight men, gay men, and trans women, always playing the role of the man. She also says um, that she feels lucky to have introduced vagina to gay men and claims that, of course, gay men are going to like it more because vagina is actually made for intercourse. I want to change the world. I want to make people think about what that means to be a man and a woman and a straight person and a gay person and understand that it doesn't exist. I want to deprogram It doesn't exist. Think, thinking they have to be this way. That's my ultimate goal. Tell me how this is not the same fucking like homophobic rhetoric we're hearing out of the... Wait, wait, wait. She just said I wanted to ch make people challenge the idea of being straight, gay, lesbian, bisexual and let them know that it doesn't exist. So, so you just said, so you were talking about gay men being gay doesn't exist and they can just, you know, think their way out of their sexuality. That's because you're bisexual. I get it. Like, bi, like I'm bi. So we have a tendency to think everyone's probably bi. No, no. There are some people who are actually really, really, really homosexual, which means they're opposite sex repulsed, same sex attracted. There are some people really, 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 really actually heterosexual. Which means they are opposite sex attracted, same sex repulsed. Uh, yeah, no, not everybody's bisexual. I know, it's really hard to believe that not everyone's like you, right? But yeah, no, yeah, tell us more, Susan. Tell us more about what a champion for gay men you've been. The trans community. I I'll wait. Buck says she was very proud of creating a category in gay male porn. You don't even need a penis to make it as a male porn star. Buck Angel was the first transsexual man ever to penetrate the mainstream adult entertainment industry. The world's only porn actor of his kind, the man with a vagina, has produced and starred in award-winning hardcore scenes with straight men, gay men, and trans women, always playing the role of the man. She also says um, that she feels lucky to have introduced vagina to gay men and claims that, of course, gay men are going to like it more because vagina is actually made for intercourse. I want to change the world. I want to make people think about what that means to be a man and a woman and a straight person and a gay person and understand that it doesn't exist. I want to deprogram people from think thinking they have to be this way. That's my ultimate goal. Tell me how this is not the same fucking like homophobic rhetoric we're hearing out of the trans community. I I'll wait. Buck says. I mean, that's not really true. So Joe Spring said, I live with two, two gay men and they've been kinder to me than most men have ever been. And I've lived with them for 15 years. The problem isn't gay men. The problem is men who think they're women, which include a lot of gay men. Right. And I think that I, I, I think that's wonderful that your friends are good to you. Um, but I don't think that because, you know, two people are representative. I think there's plenty of very, very misogynistic gay men. I've, I've encountered a lot. Homosexual transsexuals are, you know, very not friendly towards women. They don't care about how they hurt women. They're hurting women actively, and those are gay men. Um, you know, and there's a lot of gay men who, yeah, I mean, through drag, drag is such misogyny, the way they make fun of, they call us fish, right? So the name for us from, uh, like, you know, homosexual transsexuals and a lot of gay men is fish. They call us fish, and I'll let you guess why, right? And so no, no one group is the problem. Okay. There's, I, there's a lot, I have a huge, a lot of gay men follow this channel. There's like, I know mad cool gay men, right? I have a lot of gay men friends too, but I also recognize that there are a lot of very problematic gay men. Same thing with lesbians. There's a lot of lesbians that are actively working against the, the rights of women, you know, through their participation in gender ideology. And there's a lot of lesbian women who are on the, on the front lines, right? It's just, everybody's so different. Same thing with heterosexual women. You got a lot of like, you know, these lib femme heterosexual women and the ones who are, you know, promoting, uh, you know, a lot of problematic, like sex work is work and this sort of stuff that's hurting women. Right. But then there's also a lot of, you know, heterosexual women who are doing amazing work. So there, no one group is the problem.
right? There, there's problematic people in every single group. Yeah, anecdotes aren't reality. Yeah, it's it's really important to remember that. Yeah, okay. Tell us to speak that way ever, ever. And I will call all of you out on that. You don't get to talk about AIDS epidemic like that ever. I wasn't ever. talking about you the AIDS there. epidemic. You don't get to talk about the AIDS epidemic. I was talking. <laughs> I was talking about the behavior of one man. Again, the AIDS epidemic, it's not like cancer where it's like, oh, God, it just happened or, you know, something like that. No, there are ways to prevent getting HIV. Again, back in the 80s, these men didn't know. Now we know if they're actively choosing to live a dangerous lifestyle, you know, that, I mean, who, who, who is that on? And then also, you know, not just using a dangerous lifestyle, but then also, again, spreading it and, and still engaging in sex work. You're the one who's made this about gay men, not me. And if you were there and you continue to speak like that, you're sick. You're actually sick. Thank you, the outlaw feminist. I appreciate you. Am I we sick? won't forget. I remember too. Americans came together and stopped that madness with understanding and science. I will never forget. I, you got when I tell you. When I tell <laughs> <Come> you <on. laughs> that I lost my friends, you have to understand how devastating that is for a young person of myself at twenty nine or in my late twenties, just. Bro, what? The, why are you crying? Because I clown. Also, I don't think that he actually. I really do think that there must be something going on with her, maybe her status or something, because she got triggered really hard. She went and like jumped on the live stream and did this whole thing, right? And I've I've clown. I've said some pretty mean things to Brianna Ivy in the past, like talking about him, his like uh, OnlyFans and him being a stripper and being an escort and stuff like that. And, and Buck didn't get like this, but it was once I brought up, like, you know, I, I said, do you have to disclose your HIV status to uh, men when you, you know, engage in sex work? That's all I said. I said, you know, I, you know, I did say he was like, whatever. Right. And that really triggered her. So uh, I'm crying. Please. And this thing comes and wipes all your friends out. It, you just, you wouldn't even be able to believe it. You wouldn't be able to believe it. It, it. It's something I hope nobody ever. Thank you, Charlotte. I'm so sorry about sending much love. I hate when people. Also HIV, I mean, to be real, HIV really is not the, 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 the horror that it used to be. Right. The, the fact of the matter is that a lot of people with well-managed HIV, and I'm not saying that we should just be like, yeah, it's cool and normal to have HIV. It's not, it's horrible, you know, but it's like, um, HIV actually, to me, I would be more afraid of having diabetes at this point than HIV, right? Diabetes is more deadly than HIV. You have to manage diabetes. It, it, it you know, shortens your lifespan. At this point, you have pretty much a normal life expectancy with HIV if you properly manage it. You know, if you keep your, if, if you can keep your viral load undetected, it's almost like you don't have it, Right. And, and you actually can't even transmit it uh, sexually at that point. So it's like, you know, getting all emotional as if this is if the scenario or the picture with HIV is anything close to what it used to be in the 80s and 90s. Come on. They're just cruel. She's just cruel. cruel. She's just cruel. She doesn't need to. What's oh, but it was all good for your little pal Brian, Brianna Ivy, to sit there and call my black boyfriend like a, a, a bum and a thug and saying that he needs to, you know, saying that he has an ankle monitor on and implying that he's a criminal. Why? Because he's a dark skinned black man with dreads. That was all good. Degrading my family, calling me, you know, a fat ass you know, degrading my body, degrading, you know, making like disgusting, you know, dehumanizing comments about, you know, oh, 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 oh. Or when, what about when Brianna Ivy said that he hopes that my cancer comes back and finishes the job because my four young children would be better off without me. I don't see you coming on the live stream and crying about that. That was okay for him to say. That was all good. I couldn't help the fact that I got cancer. Getting HIV is a choice at this point, unless you're like born with it. 
Getting HIV is a choice. Getting cancer wasn't a choice. Saying that my children would be better off without me when they had to go through a period where they were terrified that they might lose me when I was terrified that I might lose them. That was one of the most traumatic, you know, period chapters in my family's life. Oh, but that was all good. All because I did a live stream kind of talking about how, you know, homosexual transsexuals are also problematic. Where's the live stream of you crying and going on about that? Stop it. Stop. Miss me with the theatrics and the performative crying. Because uh, I'm not the one. I'm slightly twisted. She doesn't need to be that way. I don't know why she is. I really don't know why she needed to do that and say mean things about. I just told you why, because he was a racist pig to my boyfriend, implying that black men are criminals. He was fucking disgusting towards my children. He was degrading towards me, misogynistic towards me, and made disgusting uh, comments back the, about uh, uh, my, my cancer journey. And the fact that I went through the very real and terrifying you know, period where I thought that I'm, I was really fighting for my life. I was really fighting for my life. So yeah, why did I hit him back? That's why, Susan. I don't see you crying about that. That's because you hopped in to a conversation that had nothing to do with you, picked up some little clip and then came on and started crying on the live stream. AIDS, it's disgusting. And so when you do stuff like that, now you're perpetuating hate again against gay people. Okay, and especially against gay men. We worked very hard to get... Yeah, Mandy, I don't care. Not Mandy, you have a problem with literally everything that I do, and I literally don't give a shit. I don't give a shit. If that... At linking somebody who's engaging in sex work with anal sex, uh, with HIV, I think is, again, when when you're, you know, a, a demographic that has almost a one in two chance of being infected, I think is more problematic. I think that when you're purposely targeting men who are partnered with women, heterosexual women who are very susceptible to being infected by HIV, again, especially if you're there with these DL dudes who go out and sleep with these men who are selling sex. Yeah, no, I don't care. Sorry, Mandy. I don't give a shit. Sorry. I don't Get fucking care. Stigma. Okay. AIDS is not only for gay people. Just so you know, I don't know if I ever told you all this. My daughter has AIDS. She's HIV positive now, but she's paused, but she was diagnosed with AIDS. What, what daughter do you, I thought you had a son. Why do I feel like she's talking about herself? I'm so, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's 30 something years ago. I have an adopted daughter. I don't know if I've ever showed, showed you her. So that's what this is about. I told you, and, and and before you know, YouTube gets mad and tries to like pull the live stream, whatever. That so there is some sort of personal thing. But how about all the people in my life that have died from cancer? But that was all fucking good, right? That was all good. It was all good. And like, no offense, but like, how is your daughter have AIDS now? It with, with all due respect, it's just a fact. That it's very hard for, if you're managing your HIV properly, there's no reason that it should go full-blown AIDS. Unless she's just not keeping up with the regimen. There's actually literally, like, not really any reason. And most people, there's been people, there was this one uh, Instagram model who had presented and was diagnosed with full-blown AIDS and had no idea, and they're able to pull them back into just HIV infection status and actually get them undetectable. So I'm trying to understand. It sounds like you're not even sure. You seem confused about, uh, is, this, is this really about your friend or your daughter or whoever? Who is it? <laughs> Come on. Adopted daughter, Rebecca. I'm going to bring her onto the podcast. Rebecca, his story is incredible. Rebecca is a Playboy playmate who contracted AIDS and Playboy dumped her because of it. That you was would, the stigma around it. You would see. This is what I'm. This is weird. Is that normal? You adopted a Playboy playmate. Whoa, what? And that you adopted, or or you had an adopted daughter that you helped kind of funnel into the sex industry, the same way that you seem to do with a lot of other. Young, vulnerable people? Are we all just going to, like, gloss over that? What? 
Bro, what? Hold on. We're gonna. What in the hell just happened? That was weird. Very hard to get rid of that stigma. Did daughter? I don't know if I've ever showed showed you her. Oh, this is my adopted daughter, Rebecca. My God, gonna... bro, what, bro? What did we just stumble on, bro? What? Bro, what? It just gets weirder and weirder. I don't think that this is like a legitimate adopted daughter. I think that this is like some kind of like, again, she always calls herself Trampa and talks about like taking people under her wing and, you know, chosen family and stuff like that. I feel like it's like some weird, it's like a Jeffrey Marsh situation. Like if your family doesn't accept you I'll be your family now like he probably did or she probably did legally adopt this woman somehow was this woman like a teenager when you like found her and were doing some work with her and was like I'll just adopt you and then what helped funnel her what bro what and bring her onto the podcast Rebecca his story is incredible Rebecca is a playboy playmate who contracted AIDS and Playboy dumped her because of it. That was the stigma around wait, AIDS back in. Wait, 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 Rebecca. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's see if there's any information about this. Because what in the actual hell? Rebecca Playboy HIV positive. Oh, what did I just do? Rebecca Playboy HIV positive. Rebecca Armstrong was born in 1967. Wait, 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 wait. So this woman, so Rebecca Armstrong, Rebecca Lynn, this is the same person, is an American HIV AIDS activist and former model and bodybuilder. She was Playboy Playband of the Month. Wait, Buck was born in the 60s. Buck was born in the 60s. Hold on. What? Right? Yeah, Rebecca Armstrong was diagnosed with HIV when she was 22. Bro, what planet? Hold on, this is weird. Rebecca Lynn Armstrong is an American HIV AIDS activist and former model and bodybuilder. She was Playboy Playmate of the Month for September 1986. Eight years later, she guys, and there's a chance that I might have to put this on Rumble. She was the first playmate to publicly announce that she is HIV positive. That has to be her. That has to be her. Let's see. Wait, let's look at a picture really fast. Hold on. Because we saw the picture that Buck showed. Uh, this is my adopted daughter. What can somebody can somebody do me a favor and Google what year Buck was born, what Buck's birthday is? Rebecca Armstrong. Buck is in her 60s, but does somebody know Buck's like date? Yeah, this is her. This has got to be her. Bro, what what is going on? This is weird. This is weird. Images. So, oh, and, and she's a bodybuilder, which makes 1962. Thanks, guys. So this woman was is is was born in 1967. So she's five years younger than Buck. Oh, Buck's young. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Buck's Buck's younger, bro, bro. What? <laughs> My adopted daughter, bro. What? What is going on? It just gets weirder and weirder. Hold on. Wait a minute. Rebecca, okay, well, and she, right here. Let's see if she has any pictures with her and her adoptive mother or trampa. Let's see who this is. Hold on. Uh, uh. Shoot. Actually, wait, oh my God. 
no, because this woman was born in, uh, oh yeah, Buck is older. What am I talking about? Buck is older. I'm sorry. I'm like, Buck is, wait, no. Yeah, Buck is older. <laughs> I'm so dumb. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Hold on for one second. Let me log in real quick. I just don't want you guys to see my thing. Bro, this is so weird. This is so weird. I know, I can't do math. I know. I know, we're all like, Buck's older! <laughs> I don't know. Or we're all Buck's younger. I know. And I'm like, yeah, wait, what? <laughs> so dumb. Sorry. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. What in the fuck? Okay, so who, oh, is this, not, this isn't her, is it? Is this her? Oh, yeah, yeah, because she's in her 60s. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, where's Buck? Oh, yeah, 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 here. Here's a picture of Buck. Here's a picture of Buck. Wait, what the fuck? Wait, where did it go? Oh. Oh, 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 it's a video. It's a video. My bad. Happy birthday. We had such a wonderful time. This was September 24, 2023. Adoption. Yeah, but it's like it's adult adoption is a youth. Yeah, how do you adopt somebody who's like five years younger than you? I guess stop it. Saying this is my daughter. Stop it. This is one of your friends. Your bodybuilder friends and, and her HIV is well managed. Crying, trying again. It's just to still again. It's just to like lay the emotional smack down on. Well, let's see. Here we go. Birthday bash was awesome. Thank you. We love you so very much. Okay, still doing the old, wait, when was that? Doing the old trampa. That was 2021. Oh, righty. This is bizarre. Let's see, um, wait, Ted Nugent. Did the same legal custody of underage girl to uh said surf and turf said Ted Nugent did the same thing legal custody of her underage girl to abuse her. I also think some of it has to do like when they're dating or something, you know. It was like a strategy, like adopted daughter usual TPA guilt tripping. Um, Joe Spring says I worked in a radio station when I was sixteen, and you wouldn't believe the mothers who would try to pawn off their fourteen and fifteen year old daughters to under rock stars. It was disgusting. Jesus. Christ. Love is amazing. Is that fuck? Oh, that's cute. Okay, let's see. So what's the deal? Wait, someone Google stuff about this. Hold on, let me see. All right, I'm going to Google stuff real quick while we watch a little bit more. Hold on. In the day, they dumped Rebecca, who was an actual Playboy playmate. She was, I think, November 1980 or something. And they dumped her. Oh, wait, really quick. Let's look at her. Let's see if, what they say about her biography on here. Okay, so it says Armstrong. See, this, this is who we want to, like, pioneer the gender critical movement. Yeah, I don't think so, guys. Like, there's a lot of creepy stuff with this champion. All right, uh, let's see. Born 1967, uh, is an American HIV. Oh. I'm so hateful, right? Yeah. Nice. All right, uh, let's see. Is an American. A I, I also, I think that she, I think that there's more to it. I wonder, like, if Buck has, if it's not just because of this person's HIV status, but I think because of the stuff that Buck engages in, you know. It, it, I don't know. I, I don't want to like put that, you know what I mean? Because I don't know. But there just seems to be a very personal thing. 
Oh, yeah, Susie Glucksman says, Buck is responsible for one of the Matrix dudes becoming AGP, so literally nothing is shocking. Or, yeah. Oh, no, no, that's not true. I thought it was Buck's ex-wife started, got together with the Matrix guy. Or was it because of Buck? I don't know. I, Rebecca, well, I, you know, you could, it could be both. It could be both. It's just so bizarre. Um, she just takes anything. She said that she likes to do pornography with men, but likes to have relationships with women. So, Rebecca Lim Armstrong, 1967, is American HIV AIDS activist, former model, and bodybuilder. She was Playboy Playboy of the Month in September 1986. Eight years later, she was the first playmate to publicly announce that she is HIV positive. She announced she's HIV positive in the September 1994 issue of The Advocate, said she had known she was infected since uh, 1989, but spent two years after her diagnosis escaping into substance abuse, which again, probably when she got close with Susan, because Susan talks about having a long history of substance abuse. By the time the publication of The Advocate article, she had come out as a lesbian and decided to educate others about HIV AIDS, especially among lesbian and bisexual women. It came out as a lesbian when you're like, what, like 40 or 30 something? You're bisexual. It's okay. It's okay to be bisexual. You can say that I'm bisexual, but now I'm like a feb femme. I only want to deal with women. Like, you don't have to. Sorry, I know like some lesbians get mad at that, but then I'm like, are you a feb femme? Like, it's okay. Um,. By the time she was interviewed in 99 for AIDS Project Los Angeles, she identified as bisexual, said she had been infected at 16. To the best at 16, there, there's no way though. Well, I don't know how, oh, let's see. Six, seven, eight, so 20. Oh yeah, I guess that's possible. Because she's like 20 at the time. So she's like, or 22, two, so four, five, six. So that was six years. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's that's actually possible. To the best of my knowledge, University of Toledo events notice in 2004 said Playboy founder Hugh Hefner and the Playboy Foundation assisted Armstrong financially in her AIDS awareness campaign. Um, oh, of course, she's like the victim. They said, oh, they dropped her. Well, you know, it's kind of reasonable to not want to... All right, um, but there's no information about her family. Let's see. Hold on. Well, I'll go, I'll look into more into that because that is really bizarre and really sounds inappropriate um, and scary. Because of AIDS. That's how insane the whole thing was. I have a lot of, of history in the AIDS movement. Okay. And people are actually saying these things still today. That's why the slightly twisted female needs to be taken out. Take it out. I'm not kidding. That woman is sick and toxic. So then after that, after I told her, wow, really? You're actually going after gay men. Shame on you. So of course, then she went after me. And then now she went on, um, what's that site, you guys? Rumble. Rumble. Then she went on Rumble and she just started, I guess, because somebody sent me a, I have friends in every part. So somebody sent me a text saying, oh, now she's on Rumble, like dragging you about your drug addiction. I didn't drag what? her. So this lady who I. I didn't drag her. I was dragging Brianna. I was dragging Bri Bri. And I was saying that the issue of, uh, again, I think that you, all your gender stuff is a culmination of your addiction. I think it's just a manifestation of addiction. I talked to you about that. I didn't drag. I literally mentioned, well, I might've dragged you actually. Let me know, probably. But I talked to you about it and you agreed. You agreed that it had to do with addiction. You talked about addiction. Oh, wait. Let's see. Um, You talked about being like a, a long-term drug addict. Let's see. Yeah, I, I, I was so mean. People are like, look, they're all nuts. <laughs> they're all a bunch of pep. Oh, I can't say that on here, but you know what I mean. Right. So, yeah, now we're attaching, they're calling it MAPS. They're calling it MAPS. Are you kidding me? And attaching that to the trans label, I, I'm done. I'm out of here. 
Go well, and that's yeah. And <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, so and there was a time though that you had talked about like, you know, the whole map thing, and I guess like, you know, needing to sort of understand, you know, where oh, these people look, come from. Ne- what I said was I understand why people are doing research on this, okay? Mm-hmm. But I said, because we need to research things. You have to. You have to research mm-hmm. why are serial killers serial killers. If we don't research it and we oh, don't understand what's going on, how are we gonna sort of this... work with these people? Yeah, so yeah, Buck Angel thinks I should be taken out. You know, it would be really interesting too. Like I, I oh my god. Oh, everything is still booting up. Can you guys hear me? The chat is frozen for me. Let me see. Why is this? Yeah. Okay, so, good. Cool, yeah. cool, cool. Buck Angel thinks I should be taken. Uh, I'm way safer where, oh, yeah, put it on Rumble. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, don't forget to like the stream. Wow, guys, that was, everyone was telling me to watch it, and I was like, sometimes I don't want to watch stuff that I know is going to get me, like, riled up, especially if I feel like I need to, like, respond and stuff. So I kind of was just like, all right, I'll deal with it later. Um, yeah, Susan, what, what, what a, what a wildly disingenuous but that's but that's the problem with people like you who aren't actually nice you know what I mean you love bomb people you're only nice because you want other people to like you and it's about control so that they won't criticize you because your behavior is so problematic is so unacceptable that you don't want people to actually look at what you're doing right? So you'll sit there and you point at everybody else. And it happened during the live stream when I pointed out what you had done to that little girl in in terms of, you know, grooming the mother and helping her and the uh, expect that everybody's just going to buy into. If you think of that, if you're just real nice enough and charismatic enough and call everybody friend and you kind of like, it's meant to disarm people. Like you calling me friend was meant to disarm me from challenging you and criticizing you. Right. It was meant to let you slide with a bunch of stuff, you know, and, and that's not how I operate. Um, and that's why. And it's like these are your true colors now, because now look how angry you're getting when somebody doesn't, you know, acquiesce to that and doesn't sit there and play along with that. And it's like, yeah, yeah, you're not the problem. It's all the other trans people. The problem. How are you not the problem? How are you not the problem? You are the huge one of the hugest problems because you're still being accepted and exalted and you've managed to you know worm your way into the gender critical sphere so you know and and every the way that you try to like represent how i i i talk you know spoke with you and discuss the bullshit and you know it's bullshit and you know it um you know you went and blocked me on you know twitter and made all this stuff or whatever let me see if I can find like how I had responded to you on Twitter. Uh, and, and you just like the way you like change the story and all this sort of stuff. But that's how you know somebody's genuinely kind, you know, and or if they're just love bombing you or putting on a show to get you to like them or go along with them or to manipulate you. It's that when you refuse to go along with it, the way that they sort of freak out, it's that like narcissistic you know, tantrum. So, um, I just think you really struggle with telling the truth. I think that you really want to be liked by everybody. Uh, ah, there's my kids. I gotta go. I gotta go guys. We'll, we'll finish this. Let me just see if there's any last minute. Now they're literally pulling up right now. I gotta go guys. Um, Susan, if you want buck. Okay. I, I, I won't, you know, buck. If you want to, uh, uh, if you want to challenge me and do the opposite of what I did to you, I'm welcome. I, I would love to do you, if I'd be more than happy guys, go ask her anyone in the chat, go ask Buck if she would like to do, and I'll reach out to you. If you would like to do another debate, you can have me, it can be in your crowd. Now let, let them all skewer me or whatever. Uh, you can challenge me. You can come at me, come at my neck answer to me you know let let's i i much prefer to make this a dialogue than than you know responding behind each other's backs back and forth and all this sort of stuff uh, i'd be more than happy to do that if you'd like to do it i'd love it um otherwise i gotta go love you guys i will catch you on the next one this is not how i expected the stream to go it was totally meant to be about 
Stella, but we'll catch up with that later. Um, love you guys. This was not, this was not expected. I just meant to like quick check in with that really fast. And then we went live. Let me see. Can I like sneak and do it? Oops. She was getting the only way to okay. uh, everything's right, cool. Let me see if I am like really, really, really fast. Ask your healthcare provider if Vic Tarvey Hold on. Right oh, now they're giving us Vic Tarvey. Uh, Hold on. Really fast. I just want to see. Can I quick, 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 quick? I just want to see the last, last little bit. Um, The last tiny little bit of this thing. And then I got to get my... Uh... <laughs> I love you guys. Thanks. So you guys are like, thank you for all the support. Really. <laughs> you know, it makes me feel better knowing that like I got you guys and um, to go up against this sort of stuff. It, it's intimidating. You know, it can be intimidating. Not gonna lie. Especially, you know, she's got a lot of like supporters and stuff and people who are like diehard. Um, but I think it's worth being called out. Oh, here we go. All right, here we go. Hold on really fast. Um, skip. All right, really now quick. To on, try to build a bridge. What's that uh, site you guys on. rumble? Is on. She went on oh, what do you mean? Night, what's that site rumble? I guess because somebody sent me a. I have friends in it. It's probably that Kayla lady who sends you everything really fast. <laughs> Mommy, I'm four. <laughs> Mommy, I'm four and I want to be a boy. Okay, cool. <laughs> Whatever, kiddo. <laughs> you know, right. I, I gotta go. I gotta go. They're coming in. I gotta go. I love you guys. We'll check this later. I'll see you later. Bye bye.